Can you guys hear Tibbs? Can you guys hear Stay Safe? Hey, everybody. How's it going? How's the audio <clears throat> here? Uh, hello, chat. Hello, hi. Is everything good, chat? It's been a it's been a little while, so like a, a lot of the settings and stuff are off. It's good to see you guys. Um, very very good to see you guys. Very excited to see you guys. Uh, so Classic S is back, season two. Uh, this is something that a lot of people have wanted for a long time now, and uh, it's just uh, it, it's just something that we're really really excited about about being back for. Uh, Burning Crusade Classic is coming out. A lot of you guys already know that. And uh, we thought it would be a good idea to uh, to bring Classic Cast back and talk about everything well, that uh, we want to do. S1, remind us, uh, when when is the TBC beta again? Uh, it is uh, unannounced, but it will be oh, okay. soon. So, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. There's a lot of people that, uh, that think that it's probably going to end up being in... What was that leak? What did that leak say? March 16th, I think is what the leak said. The leak, the leak said March 16th. So... Uh, hmm in a week <laughs> so so it, it, it might uh i mean i don't know there was that other leak right before it right that said like february well, well there was a leak before that that said february and there's another leak that said pre-patch will be in may and uh there, there's a whole lot to talk about about what we know with with burning crusade so far uh until anything's official from blizzard like obviously like we don't really know what's going to happen but um but it is fun to talk about for sure um but first things first, how, uh, how's everybody doing? How, how, are, how are you guys doing? Tips, stay safe. I'm doing good, man. Uh, it's been a while, obviously. It's really cool. I was just saying before we started, it's really cool to see the overlay. I, I think the last time we did one of these, stay safe wasn't married. Um, I didn't True. have a kid. Uh -huh. uh, and, and nothing changed for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no changes. Business as usual. Business well, as usual. one wasn't the GTRP streamer. He's uh, killing true. it. I'm sure, yeah. The GTRP has been going really good. Yeah. So, we just uh, still in uh, police training, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, it's been great. It's really cool to see everybody. I can't see chat on my end, so hi, everybody. But, uh, but yeah, it's been a long time. Um, been busy, obviously, with some OTK stuff behind the scenes. Haven't been streaming as much, but... You know, when S Fan let me know that he wanted to bring Classic Cast back, honestly, uh, definitely think the reunion episode would be worth it. So it's good to see you guys. It's good to see S Fan, obviously. Stay safe. Haven't been seeing or talking to as much lately, but it's good to see you too, man. Yeah, I feel like um, you know, you guys are so busy with, busy with OTK stuff. We're in different different portions of the, you guys are in Texas. I'm in Oregon. And COVID, you know, whereas we used to see each other like once or twice a year at conventions yeah. or I would go down to Texas or even Esfon came up to Oregon one time. It's like COVID has just locked everyone down. Rightfully so, right? So you got to mm -hmm. take it seriously. But um, man, yeah, it's weird because this last year, I think it's because we all ended up playing classic a little bit differently. And, you know, the issue was exacerbated by COVID. I feel like it sort of pulled us all apart a little bit. Yeah, and so it's nice to uh, come back and do class cast again and kind of touch base and see how. Like, guys, this episode we're gonna kind of recap classic and talk about you know what what we're what we're gonna do for TBC and how, go over all the TBC news. So it's gonna be a really good recap episode. And uh, if you, if you didn't watch class cast back in the day, you, we're gonna go over everything that we talked about before, right? So it's gonna be really good today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I guess that's a good point to just to let people know what class cast is because there's probably a whole lot of people here that are new that. Uh, weren't around whenever we did Classic Cast uh, almost every week leading up to Classic WoW launch. So Classic WoW is is uh, Burning Crusade podcast now, right? Before it was been a little while uh, talking about Classic WoW in general, actually. But um, we we kind of did it leading up to WoW Classic and preparation for WoW Classic and just kind of sharing what we know about it and what our opinions and stuff are. And um, it was a lot of fun. It was great, and and we're really excited to bring it back. Like I said earlier. So uh, we're going to be doing the same for Burning Crusade. And then uh, however uh, however that goes, like, I guess currently the plan is that we're going to be doing like a, a, a like kind of like a series of episodes where we will um, we'll go in and we'll do uh, we'll do it leading up to Burning Crusade. And then at that point, we'll decide what, what we want to do. So I think in hindsight, I, I kind of wish that we had kept doing it uh, while while we were playing classic a lot more. But it's just uh, kind of like kind of like Stacey have said earlier uh with how everybody was playing the game different and different schedules and stuff things just kind of got like crazy so uh we'll see what happens yeah we'll see what happens it's gonna be a lot of fun it is true though we 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 had the idea for classic cast in late 2017 and then we started i think yeah. in early 2018 it's been like probably over three years maybe since the first episode of classic cast so we're yeah, all kind of crazy yeah 
getting old tips you know tips had a baby i'm married have a baby in two months man mm -hmm. a lot has changed right yeah yeah, yeah for sure it's it's been uh it's been really really good <laughs> um so go, sorry go ahead tips nothing i just uh i just remember i'm like thinking back to the first time we we had spoken together about class cast on like the phone mm -hmm. uh, it was weird i was just like in a parking lot walking around and we were like talking about names and and like how we wanted to do it and what the structure should be and stuff like that. It's just a trip, man. It's a trip that it's been three years. That's yeah. It's Cause I'm, I'm trying to think real quick how it happened was like, um, it, I, I think so tips had just started making videos and, uh, so stay safe and I had, had known each other for a while and we, we had talked about potentially doing a podcast or something in the past. And then mm -hmm. we just kind of like tabled the idea. And then Tips had just started making videos, and Tips was somebody who used to watch my stream back on YouTube uh, before before I switched to Twitch and that whole thing. That's kind of a long story. But uh, Tips asked me about doing a podcast, and I was like, "It's funny that you say that because Stacey and I were just talking about this, and uh, that's kind of that's kind of just how how it all started, and just got the ball rolling, and it's been a it's been a crazy." three years now since uh since Back that from the old private server days it's funny even bigger than classic cast you look at like the the big classic wow streamers these days they're all private server guys from back in the day mm -hmm. like those are the guys that stuck around it's funny yeah about. yeah for sure so it's been uh it's it's been it's been really really cool to see just everything everything that's happened in the last few years and everything with uh classic wow and how that's developed and uh some good and some bad actually i mean there, there's been plenty of times especially if you watch my stream like you know like i'll, I'll definitely like, complain about certain things that i think they should have done better or whatnot but uh let's go ahead and start with that today actually it's kind of like a little bit of a wrap up of classic and uh even though we all still play classic and all that there's no more um uh, there's no more phases coming out specifically for the vanilla part of classic and we're kind of getting ready for uh tbc pre-patch so before we get into pre-patch and that kind of stuff uh how did you guys feel overall about classic. Stay safe. You want to go first on this one, man? <laughs> Obviously, there were some things that were mishandled. I think, interestingly enough, as classic has gone on, I think it's a lot of the basic systems have gotten better. Like, obviously, the spell batching window is being reduced. That's sort of, sort of in preparation for TBC. The way layering worked, they improved a lot. They made good Black Lotus changes. Um, and there's other things I wish they would change, but. They actually, all throughout Classic WoW, have made some positive changes. I wish they would change some other things, but, um, you know, I put it this way. If they ever do Classic Fresh, like a year from now, where it's like they, they, it's, it's a new 1 to 60 Classic WoW server, I think it'll be better than what we experienced uh, over the last year and a half. I think Classic 2.0 will be better than Classic 1.0 yeah. if they redo that, based yeah. off of some of these changes that they've already made throughout the last year and a half of Classic. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you brought it up. If you had asked me that question, S fan, like three or four weeks ago, I would have had a very different opinion than I do now. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's because, you know, when they when they made the effort to reduce the spell batching window, we've seen a couple of surveys come out talking about potentially a classic plus type thing where they relaunch classic and perhaps make some more changes in the new version. All of that's very promising. Um Overall, I think Classic was, in, in terms of like Blizzard, probably a phenomenal success. Otherwise, we wouldn't be getting TBC. I, looking back on it, I, I really enjoyed certain parts of it. Other parts, you know, it was unfortunate, uh, especially around Phase 2. The launch of Phase 2, I think, was probably yeah. the big tipping point for me, where it was just like, okay, you know, it's just things need to change a little bit. But looking mm -hmm. back on the experience from start to finish i'm very happy with it like i was uh i was going over some forum posts the other day because a lot of people recently have been talking about like oh man the no changes community and no changes that was so stupid and um stay safe might know what i'm talking about we were talking about a little bit in a, in a private discord but going back and seeing what classic could have been compared to what it turned out to be and what i mean could have been like in terms of how bad it could have been I think overall, when you analyze it from that perspective, I do think it was still very, very good mm -hmm. uh, because it really could have messed a lot of things up. Like when Rift released their classic version, it was awful. Like other games had tried to re-release classic versions, awful. Uh, but I think the way Blizzard did it compared to most other MMOs that, that get this treatment or other games in general, 
I think they did a pretty good job, and I'm very excited about Classic 2.0 if that ever comes. Well, I, I, I think it was something I saw you post uh, somewhere. It was like, you know, as far as the hashtag no changes movement, you need to understand the con you need to understand the context under which like that was being expressed. So when the whole no changes thing started, there were people on the forums. It's like immediately after the classic announcement, people on the forums like, wow, classic, wow, let's have wow token, let's have Pandarans, let's have. And so then the response is like, yes. no, hold up, no changes. <laughs> like. And th that doesn't mean, like, I don't know, like, obviously there are things... So, well, for it turns example, for into me, a whole other thing, right? Yeah. 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 Go ahead, go ahead. I was just, I was just adding. I, I was going to say, like, for me, I would consider... There are certain things about Classic that are technically no changes, right? As far as, like, mm -hmm. dungeon XP and XP boosting and world buffs. But it's like, was this the intended way for people to play the game? Like, did Blizzard back in the day intend for people to use an elaborate level 20 Warlock summoning alt network to get every world buff in the game and kill bosses in 30 seconds? Like, yeah, probably not. Like, did people intend to, like, w w is the, for the most viable leveling strategy to be AFK inside a Maradon, well, a mage, like, runs around and pulls 4,000 mobs? Right. Yeah, probably not. So even though that stuff is technically no changes, I think, to me, it's a no-brainer. Like, we should probably not have that stuff in the game. Um, but, like, I think, I think, like, the spirit of no changes, like, hey, let's not have achievements. Let's not have pet battles. Mm -hmm. But, like, it, it, like that's kind of how I always took it. And uh, I'm happy that they that they didn't have those kind of changes right absolutely yeah i think like uh it, it's just one one of those things in general where whenever you have one group of people going one way really hard then you have like a like a bounce back going really hard the opposite way and w blizzard decided to do completely no changes and we talked about some of that stuff like i, I know i i talked about uh some things with spell batching right like well, that was something we were all kind of concerned with was being worried that blizzard's gonna try and like overcompensate or maybe we're just flat out wrong about what the spell batch window is and it ends up being way too big, right? Which is exactly what happened. I, I still think that if spell batching was a lot smaller, there are certain mechanics that, uh, uh, mechanics of the game, like the ways that like the game is played that have a lot to do with how batching works. But Blizzard did two things wrong with batching. One, they made the window massive. It's 400 milliseconds. And I think it was 200 on private. But not only that, they put the entire game on a batch. Literally every interaction in Classic WoW is on a batch, and uh, it's not supposed to be. Like, it, it, it's, it's just not. They, they, ha whenever you talk to a vendor, you shouldn't be on a batch. Whenever you're looting something, you shouldn't be on a batch at all. Uh, it, it should be strictly like combat with like certain abilities. Now, they are getting rid of the batch, but, mm -hmm. um, and this is something that might come in pre patch or a patch right before pre patch. I don't know. But uh, if you play on the Classic test server right now, Classic PTR, You'll see that uh, they are getting rid of the batch, but there's certain things they are going to specifically be putting on a delay or a batch uh, to be able to kind of like account for how the game is played or meant to be played or whatever. Uh, one of these things is seal twisting, which a lot of people have talked about with, because if they get rid of batching completely, then the way that you seal twist in classic doesn't work. So uh, they've manually made some changes to uh, account for that and fix that, which is cool. I don't know. I, I haven't seen you talk about this. I don't know if anyone's talking about this. As far as like the the double, like you can have steel butt on the lions and vengeance on the horde. That that's a huge buff, right, for both factions because now you can have five stack vengeance and blood in between as you're maintaining your five stack vengeance. That's actually like a really substantial ret pound and buff going into TBC. It's, well, it's huge. It could be. I don't know because I uh, I don't think it's going to be efficient enough mana wise to run vengeance while you're doing seal of blood while DPSing because well, if, all you have to do is get it up five stack and then swap back to it once every 14 seconds and one tap it, top it off and then swap back. I don't know. Like I, I it well, depends yeah, on how long fights are, right? If I remember right, I think vengeance has to proc. I don't think it's an automatic. Yeah, but oh no, maybe uh, they changed it in a later patch. If no, 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 if you have a slow weapon attack speed, it's like a hundred percent proc. Pretty it's much, it's like really it's, high it's, PPM. The proc chance scales off of your weapon attack speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. the um, so the thing is, is with vengeance. Ve originally, here's I kind of let we'll talk about this a little bit more in a little bit, like as we kind of move on in the show. But how Seal of Vengeance works, or the, I guess the intent of Seal of Vengeance was that it was basically going to be like a uh, a paladin tanking seal while wearing mm -hmm. warrior gear, which is essentially what happened with Seal of Blood, right? Seal of Blood mm -hmm. was like Paladin DPS while wearing warrior gear without any spell power mana or anything. Uh, Seal of Vengeance was the same way, but how it turned out was a spell power weapon and just going with a typical spell power tanking build was just better anyway. So then people ended up not really using Vengeance. 
Now you can kind of twist vengeance and righteousness and stuff together for tanking, but um, that's kind of like the difference between the the two seals and like what their intent was. Blood was for DPS, vengeance was for tanking, and uh, yeah. vengeance, to, in my opinion, wasn't even very good. What I used vengeance for mostly back in the day was I used it for duels, and I would uh, I would use it against rogues to keep them from restealing. Mm -hmm. Let me ask guys this uh, mm -hmm. on a getting off of the paladin topic. What was your favorite phase or like like highlight favorite portion of a phase of classic WoW? In mm -hmm. retrospect, the 100% mm -hmm. best part of classic mm -hmm. as a phase or like individual thing that happened. Just it just like yeah, just any part. So for me, I'll say probably uh, the bug wars, the scarab lord grind. That was really that was good. probably the highlight. That was so and so insanely fun. Yeah, that was a really, and really good. And roaming around and PvPing and griefing other gills that are trying to farm carapaces. And, oh, that was so insanely fun. Yeah, uh, like fumigating the hives. That was really fun. Yep. Fumigate. Yeah, that was really good. That was up there for me. Um, I think as far as, like, a gameplay phase goes, it's now, to be honest. As far as gameplay really? goes, it's now. Yeah. Uh, but that's just from a gameplay perspective. Like, I think Nax is, like, a, a finely tuned raid and... I don't think any other raid was like that, and it's, it has a lot to do with the entire game being based off of patch 1.12. So, yeah, which is, I, I mean, that that's one thing that like I kind of felt like burned by, and that's something we talked about constantly on the show, and um, it's it's kind of like this uh, insistence on no changes or whatever. Blizzard made specific changes to the game; they did because they they didn't have yeah. any sort of progressive itemization. Every uh, yeah. encounter was post nerf. So everything, basically all the characters were as strong as they were going to be in vanilla from the beginning, outside of like whatever gear they had. But for the for for that gear that they had, it was the best type of gear. Um, the bosses were the easiest version of the bosses. Now since uh, Nax wasn't released until the end of vanilla, and we got the end of vanilla version of everything, that's why Nax is like such like a, a massive, I mean it was, it was already a huge step up in difficulty, but it's twofold because it's actually supposed to be that difficulty for the type of characters that we have. Whereas AQ, BWL, MC, everything was way easier on top of the fact that, yeah, like we know the fights and this and that, but uh, we knew the fights and whatnot on private servers too. And uh, none of this stuff was this easy. So uh, I, I do feel like they needed to make changes to account for the changes that Blizzard decided to make. Um, yeah. Which was a lot of it was the itemization issues and, and whatnot. Cause in my opinion, that was just kind of lazy, right? Like if private yeah. servers had done the itemization, which does lead into something to talk about for Burning Crusade as well. Um, but I, Nax, I, Nax in phase six for me is so, it's like so love hate because I think Nax is the most fun, most challenging, most individual player responsibility raid that there is in classic, which mm -hmm. I think for me makes it the most fun. The problem is the barrier of entry in so far as price point, it costs so much gold to, yeah. per to perform in Nax. I think it's very cost prohibitive. Uh, that's like thoughts on the raid. And then, of course, if you like to PvP, I think phase six PvP is probably the worst that there is. Uh, people do so much damage. It's so bursting globally that yeah. it, it, it's just not really, you, d you never have those like balanced, fun, longer fights where people's skill can sort of start to shine. And you just start having people one shot or two shot each other. And it just is way, like I've been queuing BGs a lot lately and it's like, oh my God, it's just, it's just disgusting. Well, you know, you know, what's interesting actually is, uh, <clears throat> I remember it being that way on private servers, and I actually think it's less like that now than it was on private, and I don't know why. Yeah, I, I, I'm just, I I'm no just comparing back to how, how it's been throughout Classic, right? Yeah. I have, I have no I idea why I feel less that way now. I, I, can't, I can't put my finger on it, but I was, I was playing the other day, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I mean, like, yeah, if you're geared, you're geared. But I think, it's, I think part of it has to do with the fact that a lot more people, like the average player is a lot more geared now not only than back in vanilla but also even on private like i walk around i see people in tier 2.5 everywhere and uh yeah. that wasn't even yeah. the case on private servers oh yeah like orgrimmar is like chock full of mitomenethils it's like actually disgusting like everyone's in tier three if you're in tier 2.5 it's like well you're, you're lagging behind buddy you know or mm -hmm. it meets for your class maybe but i uh, think the sorry go ahead well to get back to your question stay safe what phase do i think was the best uh, actually, this might be kind of a cheesy way to answer the question. I actually think the best point of classic was the classic beta. And, uh, I would actually agree with you, by the way. Yeah. Like looking back on, I recorded a ton of vid uh, video footage of the beta that I still have. And just like going through it, uh, a few times throughout the course of classic, 
it was so fun man uh like it felt like a community the meta was unexplored and i think this is one of the biggest reasons why i enjoyed it so much you know it stopped originally at level 30 who had played a level 30 meta before nobody really so you know you had it felt like almost a new game where you had to discover what the best in slot items were the world felt so dangerous because you know you were level 30 and everything else was so much higher if you wanted to get certain enchants and stuff like that uh and you know no mounts which was pretty significant too so it just felt like everything was fresh the server community was great and the game felt like truly unexplored and i had a freaking blast dude i mm. think the beta was super fun like one of the best experiences i ever had in gaming so to, to touch on that and really to delve into that a little bit I, I think the key thing there is we saw something in the classic wow beta that we had never seen before in wow and that was specifically a level 30 meta people were mm -hmm. looking at stuff that they didn't even care about before trying to min max at level 30 and it's like kind of like okay come on but it ended up being really really fun in a lot of ways because we were learning different ways to play our characters and uh you saw like a, a greater range of imbalance in a lot of ways that uh that we don't see at level 60 right sure like there's certain things that are imbalanced in in this in this avenue or that avenue great whatever i feel like in classic wow especially in patch 1.12 or in phase six uh, kind of every class has some kind of thing that makes them overpowered, right? They have something that's just kind of like, okay, that's BS. And, and the game is a lot more, from a PvP perspective, the game is a lot more balanced than I think people give it credit for. Uh, there are certain things that are completely dumb, sure, right? Like there's the elemental master mastery for shamans, right? Like the double crits and it's supposed to be one crit and they, they still haven't fixed that. Or there's certain specific things, sure, but... Um, it's, I, I, at least in my opinion, I think the game is a lot more balanced. In PvE, it's different. In PvE, it's very, you know, you, you one of your people are min-maxing, and then you have, like, a huge disparity between, like, certain classes as far as, like, PvE DPS goes. But if Classic has been any, any uh, I guess, evidence of this, it's that you don't really need to go and try and speedrun or max everything out to be able to clear the content, right? Like, um, for Crusade, for example, we had, within three weeks, we had five raid groups, full clear next, and... Well, I think now not every group does, but uh, for for the longest time, like every group had a ret paladin. We had ferals. We had whatever the hell, right? And you know, within three weeks, we had everything full cleared. But a lot of that is because preparation. We had a lot of gold saved up, and each sort of raid tier, it just gets more and more expensive. And that's that's something that Stacey had mentioned a little bit earlier. No. Yeah. No, yeah, I completely agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think, you know, talking about, you know, like the best way to play the game or most fun way to play the game. I think if I was going to go because for, you know, I recently stepped down a couple months ago, but I, I led a speedrun guild all through classic and we we went for got server first on Fairlina a couple times and we did this and that. If I was going to go back in time and replay classic or, or play classic again, I would probably lead a speedrun guild with no world buffs, a no world buff speedrun guild. Mm -hmm. And then that would open you up to doing a lot more world PvP because you don't have to be raid logged with your buffs and people can't counter grief you. And it, it would just like yeah. I, I get the whole world buff thing. I'm st I'm still so mad about. It. I think it's so bad for the game. Like well, you're ha the the way that it incentivizes you to actively not play your character for a couple hours or a couple yeah. days, however long you're raid logged. And that is, you know, I just I want to be able to play my main when I want to play my main. Right, that's my thing. That that's something that we talked about a lot too in uh, in, in the older episodes of Classic Cast. I, I think. I actually like getting my world buffs, but I, I think that a big problem, like you said, like incentivizing being logged off, the biggest mm -hmm. problem with world buffs isn't even the fact that they exist. I think it's the fact that uh, they're so easy to counter, right? Like if you die, you die. But I think uh, I think people get people, people get scared of running around the world or getting their world buffs together, and it, it's just basically it's player behavior. And again, like I said, you mm -hmm. got to account for the times. Half the world buffs are undispellable. And you can just run around, you can press a button, you can dispel somebody's world buffs. Like, oh, PvP, bro. It's like, that's not PvP. You get your ass kicked, right? You're not wearing any gear and you press one button and there's no counterplay. But, um, mm. like, on, on private, like, it's not that it didn't happen, but it didn't really happen that much. Like, I remember on private server, we would go and, okay, guys, 30 minutes before raid, we would just go make the rounds around the world. And everybody would get their world buffs together. And we didn't have to worry about resetting an Anixia head, right? That's something else. Yeah. Like, they got rid of that. There's, there's so many little changes that they could have made to... Uh, account for player behavior and account for the times and how 
Uh, people want to play the game. There are more people playing the game now than there were. There are more people at level 60 playing the game and doing end game raid content. And of those people doing all those things, a lot more of them want to go get their world buffs and stuff because uh, for a lot of people, it's fun. I, I think there is like a silent majority of people that like raiding with world buffs. They just don't like the process of having to go get everything with the risk of like somebody clicking a button on you and getting either your Songflower or Dire Maul buffs dis uh, dispelled. Well, I, you know? I, think, I think it's like these are MMO players. I think it's reasonable to expect people to want to in max and perform as highly as they can. And this is why things like dungeon boosting or world buffs, things like this is so prevalent mm -hmm. i think people would rather min max than have fun to a certain degree like there's a break point right but it's like it's it's not fun to afk inside of mardon it's not but it's like five times faster than doing quests so people kind of rationalize it it's like it's not fun for a lot of people to get world buffs or get griefed and do the pvp that's involved with it or get purged and be raid logged for a day and a half but you know you can't parse and you know you're not going to have a good run unless you get them and so it's like i in my opinion if you remove these things from the game you know, I really don't think a lot of people, other than warriors, okay, maybe red paladins too. I don't mm -hmm. think many people would miss them. Like it would make the raids harder. Um, people would be able to play their character more, and you wouldn't have that guilt of like, oh, man, I didn't get my world buff, so I'm not going to perform this week. I'm going right, to get my right. raid back. You know, I, I yeah, I think it's like a weird. Um, it's a good discussion to have because, like you said, there's some classes that it affects a lot. Uh, like paladins, for example, like red paladins, and really all hybrids. Uh, well, I guess it's really just enhanced shamans and red paladins because we get the benefit of melee and the spell stats from the world buffs. So it's it's a night and day difference if if like I have my world buffs or not. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like like we go and we we like you just compare, right? It's 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 absolutely well, I mean, massive. Yeah, because like I've had you know, I've had I, two I, times. I think. Go ahead. I was gonna say I think like red paladins are probably as far as like removing world buffs probably at the shortest end of the stick there. But I'll tell you like another good thing with getting rid of them or just not having them in the game would be you look at like the top guilds are running like twenty two warriors. It's like okay, the reason why you have so many warriors is because warriors scale so insanely really, really hard, hard with world buffs. So if you drop out world buffs, you know you might be able to make a reasonable argument to bring more mages or bring more warlocks. Then maybe you pop in a boomkin or what? Like who knows, right? Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, like I, I don't know. Sorry to say, sorry to say. Yeah. yeah, I, I think, I think world buffs do a couple of good things, but I think the bad ultimately outweighs the good. But like, the the big thing, especially, I can only speak on my experience as a warrior. When you play without world buffs as a warrior, forget the damage side of it. The class feel is so much different. You're not getting as many crits. You're not getting as much rage. Mm -hmm. Your cooldowns just feel a lot slower. It's literally just bloodthirst into whirlwind, and then waiting. You've got no extra rage to dump most of the time. So, like, it actually feels really bad to play the class without world buffs. So, they help in that regard. But also, one thing world buffs do, and, and if you log on to Feralina, you can attest to this, at least Horde side. Um, one of the things you'll find right now in world chat and trade chat is all these different services for Dire Maul tribute, for booty base summons, for, yeah. you know, buying and selling hearts and stuff like that they do add an element of, of something they, they give you something to do kind of uh outside like raid logging typically and they do create this like small little social fabric where you know if you're on horde side you know you hit up kumi if you want uh a dire mall tribute summon and buff you know you know you hit up uh what is it chonkla or whatever the guy's name is chanklari for like the booty base summon so like it adds some cool things like that and something mm -hmm. to do but ultimately, like the, the down the downside, as you guys mentioned, like having to log your character for multiple days just to be able to secure a way inside the griefing it adds, um, and yeah. obviously the creation of the raids. Like, if there was a way to get the best of both worlds, where you could have world buffs, maybe, but you buff the raids, and then the world buffs themselves are either non dispellable or they're a token that goes into your bags that you activate inside a raid it kind of preserves the need to still go out and about in the world, collect these items, collect these buffs, those services stay intact. Um, classes still can feel good in the raids, but the raids aren't trivialized. Maybe something like that, because I do think they add something to the game, but right now in their current state, not more than what they take away. Yeah, I think uh, I think from a design perspective, what you just said with the tokens would probably like have made the most sense. But then that that's like, that that causes other problems, right? Like, okay, well now you need to have more opportunities for more backspace and this and that. So, yeah. um, I think from a design perspective, that does make the most sense. But there is one more thing that you mentioned right there that uh, you you kind of you kind of glossed over this, right? And it's it's uh, going back to like the community aspect of the game and knowing people. 
right? Knowing yeah. people on the server who do certain things and kind of like, you know, they, they make like a, they make a business on the, in the game doing whatever, right? Like we have like Anubis Shadow does, uh, like has Dire Maul Tribute open like pretty much all day every day. And she just, she just sits in there and ate gold and you just walk through and you get all your buffs, whatever. Uh, and you can get a summon from, from a number of people doing summons there. Or uh, I think Fabed Wait, does buffs. Oh, Huh? Hey, dude, they're soft on Horde side, dude. Kumi, what the hell? You said eight gold. They're charging us fifteen, dude. What the hell? Well, they, look, listen. The alliance is a lot more like together on Horde Fa or Alliance Fairlina than than on Horde Fairlina. Okay, it's just it's just how it is, dude. Everybody's just trying to help each other out. So uh, the the beginning of phase one, we were so outnumbered that there was like a lot of camaraderie and uh, goodwill built toward between all the guilds on the alliance side. So now I heard uh, Horde Fairlina is like a lot of gdkp and a bunch of mercenaries and people are just like it's like lawless and everybody's just trying to get their gear and stuff and it's all a bunch of people playing for themselves dude so well, you know goes. what if only there was a version of wow that didn't have world buffs and had slightly harder raids oh can can you even imagine that man man with, really, with really cool you know attunement chains where you get attuned to the raid yeah like oh, i think like a slightly better class balance and maybe some you know better pvp system Will never happen. I don't think that'll ever happen. Yeah, so I always cool. said it, dude. Shadowlands. <laughs> I always said it. Yeah, you could call it Shadowlands. <laughs> if they made a game, if they made a game called or not called, but if they made a game that was like right in the middle ish of mm -hmm. Dark Edge of Camelot and WoW, it would just be so. It would be beautiful. And you now you would obviously like have to account for the times and certain things we've learned. And uh, this is almost going to turn into a whole nother discussion. We are going to get into like some specific Burning Crusade talk here pretty soon, guys um we just kind of want to wrap up because it's been a while right and we want to we we are all still playing classic and we're streaming classic uh like you know uh, states if you do your raids wednesday mornings right yeah wednesday morning wednesday, at four in the morning yeah it's early, great. i actually early love morning. it dude and then i do i do my raids tuesday nights right and that's that's you know we still mm -hmm. do our weekly raids and states if still uh plays classic mainly and and you've been doing some valheim and stuff you're actually you're doing uh asman and rich's uh valheim tournament is that right yeah, and Rich told me that uh, he's trying to get me the tournament. He says, Stacy, if you should do my tournament, every time you get a kill, I'm going to gift you 20 subs. And I was like, okay, I'm going to get zero subs. Dude, so it's going to be great. See, tips, <laughs> tips. Now we know why Rich is broke. So no, that, no. That, between that and Pokemon cards. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's uh, it's been a good time. We're we're still like very interested in classic and stuff, and uh, sometimes we might dip into some other things and. Uh, I think for pre-patch, for pre-patch, uh, we're all going to be on board. And, and Tips, Tips doesn't stream as much lately because uh, Tips has been doing so much work behind the scenes for the org, right? That's kind of like his, his main thing now. And um, just like Rich, right? Speaking of Rich, like that is that is kind of like their, their top priority is uh, doing doing work for the org as opposed to as opposed to stream type mm -hmm. stuff. So uh, and that's why you haven't seen Tips around as much lately. But um, I think that uh, I think that come pre-patch we are all going to be all over it and even beta, right? Speaking about how much we, we liked the beta and uh, how fun the classic beta was for us. And uh, the, the big meme is like streamer beta and this and that. And it's like, yeah, like that's, that's going to happen, right? You're going to see uh, people right outside of the section even probably get access to beta. But there's going to be a lot, of, a lot of people and by volume, by numbers, you're going to get a lot of people who um, well, yeah, uh, I mean, are so going to get it more than streamers. Right. There's a bit of an exposure bias, right? So I'll tell you on the classic beta, it's like, I don't know, maybe like one or two percent of the people playing were streamers. Everyone else was normal people that got invited. But yeah. it's incidentally, the only people you saw playing the beta were streamers because, because they're they're the people streaming, right? They're the, who else are gonna watch the streamers? So like there you know, there's a good chance you guys get in the beta, maybe. Yeah. If you're just a random guy. Yeah, and, and something that you should do, by the way, is for uh you can you can actually go to the Battle.net website and there's like a opt-in for testing. So <clears throat> In my opinion, you should do that for uh, classic PTR. You should do that for WoW retail PTR, right? Mm -hmm. uh, pretty much anything. I, I would just opt in, so you have a chance to get in. And uh, I think Burning Crusade beta is going to be amazing. I think pre-patch. So we talked about the specific meta of level thirty classic WoW in the beta and why that was so fun. <clears throat> I don't think we're going to get that as much in the TBC beta, but you know when we are going to get that is we are going to get that in the TBC pre-patch. Because mm -hmm. if you look back on it, back in the day, nobody really thought of, that was our first ever pre-patch. Nobody really tried to build anything around the 
uh, the meta of pre-patch and basically doing what is essentially a Project 60, like a stream event, right? A Project 60 in Burning Crusade. But that's what pre-patch is. It's going to be level 70 uh, talents. It's going to be Burning Crusade talents, Burning Crusade mechanics, mm -hmm. everything put at level 60. And that is going to be so much fun. Which I, means if you're a prop paladin, you can go and tank next Ramus. You, you have a taunt now. You, you have more a taunt. damage, more threat. You take less damage. Mm -hmm. A little um, bit more health. Boomkins are better. Shadow priests are better. In the actual pre patch back in the day, there was a month of level 60 arena where you had people queuing arena, you queuing skirmishes uh, yeah. at level 60 doing doing TBC arena. And mm -hmm. it was like, it was, it was insane, right? So if they do it the same way they did back in the day, oh, it's going to be so cool to queue arena at level 60. It's going to be awesome. It, it's gonna, it's going to be absolutely amazing. I think completed waters, it, like you said, S man, just like the beta, uncharted waters. The meta is going to be completely in flux. Who knows? You know, from from PVE to PVP, who knows what's the best? You know, we'll definitely be putting on some cool, uh, some cool PVP yes. tournaments and stuff like that. Uh, so it's going to be really fun. I I am so stoked for that. Like literally, like I'm excited for Burning Crusade, but pre patch like almost the same level because it's going to be so short lived that it doesn't really have time to get boring. I think it's going to be a period where we look back on it like very, very fondly for sure. Yeah, I, uh, I'm i very, very excited for pre-patch. And, and uh, those of you guys who watch my stream regularly, regularly you kind of know, like my, my stream has kind of um, changed a little bit to, to be a little bit more variety focused. But uh, I, I'm always going to be, anytime there's like something going on in WoW and uh, especially classic, I, I'm always going to be interested and uh, I'll be playing it, right? So any, anytime there's a new patch or... Uh, any sort of new content, right? Like I've, I have, dude, I thought about this the other day. I think I have about 500 days of play time in vanilla. Wow. Playing a red paladin. Holy oh, counting, counting, counting back in the day, counting and private retail, servers counting and private server yeah. and counting this. I have about 500 days played, oh. which is, uh, I have no life. <laughs> so, so, uh, yeah, I have, a I, I have a whole lot of time played in vanilla. Wow. But at, at a certain point, like it is time to move on. Right. We talked about a fresh classic and stuff like that. And, uh, for me at this point, I think I'm done, right? I don't, I don't expect, I'm going to copy my character over and, uh, this is a good segue into actually burning crusade and, and what we, uh, what we know about burning crusade so far. Um, but they are going to be making a, uh, they're going to be making a vanilla forever server, classic forever. They're going to, what are they calling it? Classic era servers is what they're calling it, where it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's vanilla forever. So. Uh, you have the opportunity to either transfer for free your character from Classic WoW to like a carbon copy of whatever server you play on. Let's say it's White Main or Fairbanks or Fairlina or whatever it is. It's like a carbon copy of that server is going to exist like out in the world. It's going to float out here. Uh, you can either transfer that character to that server or you can copy it over and then you can continue to play Burning Crusade with that same character. And we don't know what the cost is for that copy, I don't think. And you know what? They said on those classic era servers with this recent poll that or uh, survey that they sent out, they said maybe on these servers where they're they're toying with the idea of making uh, additional changes or rebalancing or additional content yeah. on those classic era servers. So yeah, I, I, I kind of think they're, I think probably in a couple months, they're probably going to drop the bombshell that, hey, on these classic era servers, we might, you know, do some changes, which would kind of incentivize people to pay for the, for the, for the clone, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think uh, I think it's going to be really interesting to see how that all pans out because I, I I do think they need to do a fresh. I, I think if they don't do fresh, people are going to go back to private servers. I don't think private servers will be quite what they were, but there are going to be a lot of people who still want that fresh classic experience. And uh, how I feel about these classic era servers, I think these classic era servers are not going to last very long as far as like a single server population goes. And if they do classic era servers, you're probably going to have to do uh, some retail style uh, sharding of the servers where you're going to be seeing people run around with like, you know, S fan Fairlina and S fan Herod or whatever the heck. Right. Yeah. I, I think it's a big mistake to maintain like both a classic era Fairlina and a classic TBC Fairlina. Um, I think it's best to just take all of these players and put them on like two or three mega classic era servers and have just a couple communities like that. And yeah. I understand that there's the name issue where you might lose the name, stay safe or whatever. But uh, like, I think that's probably just what, what has to happen for classic era. Well, and the issue with that, I think would be the name, the name thing is one people feel like they lose community a lot of times whenever uh whenever they have to go through a server merge or um anything of the sort too 
I don't know how they would do it with like having people cross, like being guilds cross server. They probably still can't do that because they don't do that in retail. Uh, I don't know exactly the best way to handle that, but b based on what they said at BlizzCon, I think generally that community is going to be gone anyway because most people are going to move on to TPC, and I would speculate most people are not going to clone their character. So if you stay on Classic Era or you clone your character to Classic Era, you have it both ways. Mm -hmm. You're probably not going to be able to play with most of your current vanilla friends or yeah. most of your vanilla guild. So probably not gonna happen. yeah, so who knows what's going to happen? It's going to be it's going to be really really interesting to see. I think. Uh, I think I think it is a good choice for them to do that, but I do think after Burning Crusade comes out, maybe like a month or so after Burning Crusade comes out, they should plan on doing uh, a fresh classic as well. So uh, to to give people that opportunity to play fresh, I don't think it's a good idea to do fresh right before Burning Crusade because I think if they do a fresh and then Burning Crusade, everybody's gonna quit and then go play Burning Crusade and then it's gonna kill those servers and it's gonna be yeah. a whole thing. So yeah. like, sorry, go hey, ahead. Wait, it has a bit of a content drought. Uh, and then that's when they launch fresh classic servers with hopefully some small improvements, potentially but a slightly more buffed raids, a spell batching fix. Hopefully the AV Warsong Gulch honor fix happens from the start instead of later on. Um, there's a bunch of small things they could improve that would make uh, the classic experience yeah. fun. But I mean, I'm kind of, I feel like I'm done. I feel like I, I beat the game and you know, that unfinished business from 17 years ago now, I feel like that's behind me, but if they did make some some small tweaks, if they did buff raids, if they did get rid of spell batching, if they did you know change the honor system, potentially some classic plus content, I might consider trying it one more time and and kind of seeing yeah. how how it all go down in the new format. But yeah, I, look, I think I think Burning Crusade though is the future. I think this classic project has expanded so much. Uh, I remember Jay Allen Brack said when he first announced Classic that they didn't want to maintain two different versions of the game. I think that's just completely flown out of the window now. Yeah. They, they've, they've I think, I think it flew out of a, a month in, dude, when they realized, holy crap, there's so many people playing this. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I think the possibilities for like the Classic projects are endless. You're going to get BC. You're going to get Wrath, most likely. I, I don't even think it's going to stop there. I originally thought when we used to talk about it on Classic Cast that they'll just end with the original trilogy. I, I don't think that philosophy holds up anymore. I think they'll just keep going and, until players don't want it anymore. And they might make Maybe. some changes, release all these servers seasonally. It might turn into a season thing. I don't know, but I feel like we're at the very beginning. Like, it feels like we're at the end of vanilla, but I think we're at the very beginning of what, like, World of Warcraft classic versions are going to become. Yeah, I can't wait for classic Shadowlands. It's going to be amazing. Oh, yeah, I <laughs> No, like if we just want to keep the topic on vanilla, there's a lot of really cool things they could do. Like obviously we've yeah. talked about the changes we like to see, like nerf dungeon XP or world buffs or whatever, 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 right? But also, yeah, I think it'd be super fun to have in the future classic speed release servers where rather than lasting a year and a half uh, of a content timeline, maybe mm -hmm. it's eight months. And so you don't have as long to farm Molten Core before Blackwing Layer comes out. You don't have yeah. as long to farm BWL before AQ comes out, which means it makes the raids harder. Um, yeah. And there's more like urgency with it. Yeah. Um, I think that having hardcore servers, hardcore is always popular in every game ever, right? So if you have a hardcore server where if you die, your character's gone, I, th I think that'd be really, really, really cool. You die in really, game, really, you really die cool. in real life. You put a USB be really into cool. your chest yeah. and then just, yeah. I think that'd be great. But uh, <laughs> no, no, you're right. You're right. Like, I think like anything, uh, I, I think, I think anything, uh, <laughs> I think anything that's like, uh, kind of people pushing themselves and trying to push the limits of the game, just like you said, I think is, is, uh, really uh really really good so uh i thought it was great the um I, it's funny there's actually so much to talk about with classic we, we wanted to move on and talk more about burning crusade uh we, we've stuck on classic a while uh but we we are going to wrap it up here in a second um and, and move on to more burning crusade talk and kind of the the introductory for i guess the rest of classic cast season two um i think for me tips I, I'm I'm very much in your boat. I feel like I've I've at this point I've done everything. I've checked all the boxes. Um, there's a few like little minor things that that I still would like to do. Like I would try and like to uh, tank in Nax or tank in AQ40 with my Paladin. But I've tanked BWL. I've tanked MC. I've tanked ZG. I've I've I've, I've done all the raids. I, I did all the raids on private servers as well. Uh, I've raid led. I've I've guild led. I've Scarab Lord Grand Marshal. 
there's like a few pieces of gear, right? There's there's actually a, a lot of gear that I don't have yet, but that's that's not really like an accomplishment. That's kind of like RNG and then waiting your turn to get certain stuff. Um, but as far as like the things that I feel like I can accomplish, I, I feel like I've done it all. So I'm, I'm very much in the same boat as you, Tips. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I got to say, like, I'll tell you, you know, I didn't really go into classic to kill Kelty's odd. Like I went into classic to kind of, for me, it's about the interactions and the drama and, you know, the, the inter-guild, you know, interactions, things like that. So for me, like I played vanilla back in the day, I spent like six years or seven years playing vanilla on private service. That's, that, that's what makes vanilla wow always fun for me is the interactions and what happened, which guild did this. And so, yeah, like, you know, I'm kind of burned out on vanilla at this point after I, playing 12 hours a day every day for the last year and a half but it's like you know if they do classic fresh a year from now hell yeah i'd probably i, I would play it differently right than i played it this time mm -hmm. but oh yeah like I, I would i would do it again i don't know if i would play as much if i would know life is hard but oh yeah i'd, I'd play it 100 percent. yeah and I i'm very excited for tbc for me for me it would all come down to to how they would want, like if they did it differently if they did the same thing i, I wouldn't do it again because just yeah. the whole like they, they they made the game so much harder to play uh, it's weird. They made the game harder to play while being an easy game than it needed to be. And that's why, that's why I think like the way they approach it on, on like Nostalrius, Lights Hope, like all the old private, like that, that core of private server was so much better. Um, uh, yeah. And we, we talked about that, all that, right? Like we talked about the no changes thing at the beginning and, uh, like I know, like there, I still have videos on my channel and me talking about why like certain changes are needed, right. To account for the times and whatnot. But like tip said, when we're having the conversation initially and people are talking about transmog and adding in demon hunters and pandas and this, it's like, hold on, hold on. No, you, now you're changing the game completely. Like that, that's not, that's not classic. Wow. Right. But a lot of the stuff that's under the hood behind the scenes, the, the average player doesn't even know how this stuff works. They don't even, they don't even know. Right. I, I know tons of people who played vanilla wild for the first time on private servers and they'd never played before. Like, you know, people who are younger or, uh, even now in Classic WoW, I don't know what your guys' experience is, but most of the people I know that play Classic are like early 20s, late teens. Like I know a few few people that are a little bit older, right? Like, you know, we're 29 and, and we're keeled over all the time. But there's a, there's a lot of people that are younger and people people uh, think that like it's mostly an older audience. So. I, uh, I, I've i definitely run into my fair share of boomers. I'll put it that way. Uh, but I, I do agree with you. I think... My biggest takeaway from Classic is how timeless the experience actually is. And we knew this going into it because we played on the private servers and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But it was something that you kind of wanted validation for. Like, is this something That's that... That's true, too. Yeah, like, maybe I'm just... I really enjoy it. Maybe it's just I'm freaking crazy. But you know, seeing its success and its continued success and seeing it endure, you know, even through retail WoW content and retail WoW patches and obviously it dropped off from its original player base. It was so hyped at the start. It's going to drop off inevitably, but seeing the game still kind of hold resilient over this past year and a half, it shows you that the game itself is just very well made. There are very few games like it on the market that it can attract that level of an audience. And, you know, the design principles that, that, you know, made it are, are still hold up today. And I think the game does still hold up. Um, it's just a good game. It's structured in a way that's a nice medium between theme park and kind of sandboxy stuff. Um, mm -hmm. The community is there. It's unique. It's got its place in the market. And uh, I think personally, I, I believe it's it's been a big reason as to why we've seen a lot of other MMOs get announced recently. Riot announced that they are working on yep. an MMO. Um, Chris Metzen, he's not working on an MMO, but he accredited classics launch as a big reason as to why he's launching his new project i think it's been inspiring people all over the industry and i think four five six years from now we're going to start to see how that inspiration you know uh, uh brings forward new games hopefully yeah i i actually 100 percent agree and um i mean there's there's a number of stuff coming out right new world uh ashes of creation um uh rides and like you said um mm -hmm. The, the, the big one that I'm excited for is actually Ashes. I, I, don't, I don't really get excited for new MMOs, but Ashes has made a very specific, concentrated effort in, in like saying, like, yeah, like we want a more old school style of MMO uh, that kind of fits in modern day. And I think that's what a lot of MMO players want. They want like the kind of, they, they want the grind to mean something. And yeah. I think Classic WoW has that in a lot of ways, but it just it doesn't really uh, account for the times quite as much. Much better than a lot of MMOs from the previous era 
like I played Dark Age of Camelot logged in recently. <clears throat> it, it doesn't hold up the way that uh, it, it definitely doesn't hold up the way that uh, the Wow does. or something does, or EverQuest wouldn't hold up the same way. Uh, yeah. But mm -hmm. I do think that a lot of those systems are really good to draw from and to learn from, and, and hopefully Ashes can do that. Uh, New World is more of like a Minecraft type game, gathering and stuff. I, I don't know how much I'm into stuff like that. Um, it is definitely true. You know, MMOs are sort of <laughs> in a sorry state. I don't think there's been a big successful MMO that has stuck around with an active player base since like 2014, which was um, uh, what's 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 it called? The the, the Asian MMO. Um, well, BDO. BDO, BDO, yeah, right. Um, BDO, and that was like 2014. Well, there's BDO. Final Fantasy 14 is doing really well now after having kind of a bad launch. That's a bit older though, right? I think that's also I 2013 or something. I think that's a little bit older. When did Final Fantasy okay. 14 come out, chat? Do you guys know? Uh, 2010, yeah. And then... Um, uh, 2010. And then Bless Online two years ago, which <laughs> yeah, is now dead. It's amazing. Um, um, but, but yeah, like the, what I was going to say, the truth is like the biggest MMO on the planet right now is a re-release of one that came out 16 years ago. Yeah. Like, and as much as I love vanilla and I, and I love TBC, it's like, come on, like, it'd be great to have some new stuff. Yeah. yeah that'd be great. You, you, know? you know what? Uh, somebody from Blizzard told me this real quick, just to mention on that point. Um, so, so I, I was told two different things. One was at the beginning of, this was at TwitchCon. Somebody from Blizzard came up to me and told me he was like, Dude, what happened was this was like where their expectation was. They had like they had like a range. Classic was, you know, they thought it was going to be here. If they were if it was here, they were going to be really happy. And if they were here, it was like, okay, that's probably realistic. And then worst case scenario was right here. It went from here to completely ripping the lid off of any expectation they have. And you mm -hmm. saw that with them originally talking about four servers, and then all of a sudden it was how many total servers are there in Classic now? There, there's uh, over 20. They're, they ended up having way more oh, servers. For 20. I mean, I think if, if you're talking about worldwide, at least over 100 between it's, China and West. Like, mm -hmm. It's Oshita. insane. It's so much bigger than they expected. And I was told, so what, when do you think was the worst part of Classic? For me, it was like the end of phase one. There was like a one month period right before BWL launched, which I was like, there was nothing to do. Or sorry, end of phase, end of phase two. Uh there was like absolutely nothing to do are, right. are we talking personally or like probably lowest count for the game or like least successful portion of the game uh personally overall personally man i don't know all track valley ranking was pretty bad man oh yeah <laughs> that yeah. Was pretty bad. but that was that was also during that time right that was like that one month right before bwo came out uh i yeah. think yeah. they just like right before that was whenever they switched to having they, they nerfed it so war song was a little bit better but uh for, for like highest efficiency um, I think overall, I think the end, I think phase five went on way too long. I think AQ was like a flop. I think a lot of people didn't like it. Um, and I think like the end of phase five was really dead, really dead for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. I think you know. phase five, I think Max came out at about the right time. It could have come out a tiny bit sooner, but um, it came out at about the right time. Now, the difference between when Shadowlands launched and when Nax came out, that's, that's a whole other story. And that's, that's a whole separate conversation. A lot of people were really upset about that. Um, I think that, uh, for me, that was kind of like the, the, probably the most dead period. And somebody told me that, um, even at that point, like, as far as like their logs and like seeing how many people are rating and actively doing stuff, uh, like, like high end content and they keep track of all the stats. Somebody said there were still more people playing classic than right after the 8.3 patch released, which is, yeah. that's, yeah, yeah, that's insane. Cause it's a dead part of classic and uh, it's like a dead period of classic, but it's right after uh, the last content patch of BFA. But that's kind of well, like I'll, BFA. I'll, I'll was tell you this too, MS. which is insane. And this is not end all be all. This is you know one piece of the puzzle. But if you go to, you can go there right now. If you guys that are watching, go to uh, Google Trends and you can search up Google search traffic on YouTube and Google mm -hmm. uh, for Shadowlands and for World of Warcraft Classic. Plug in the keywords mm -hmm. and classic search interest on Google and YouTube past Shadowlands after like two months of Shadowlands after two months of Shadowlands uh, release. That's crazy. So that's, that's actually it's shocking crazy. to me. That, that's really like, surprising. Classic WoW has even at classic's lowest, it has a, a lot of desire and very strong staying power. Yeah. yeah. I do like Shadowlands a lot, by the way. I think, I think a lot of people think that, that those of us who are classic guys are like, we don't like retail at all. Like for me, uh, like hell I, I hit, I had 2,400 and threes six seven weeks ago eight weeks ago uh, like 
I, uh, but I only PvP. Like, I, I don't really like doing a, a lot of the other end game mm -hmm. content in, in retail. Uh, I just like the PvP and, and all that stuff. So, like, I hit 2400. I was the number one geared paladin on Kel'Thuzad. I was number 15 overall. Like, my item level was number 15th on the server. And, um, but, but I, I just, f for me, uh, like I got all the gear and I want to get my glad wins now. I just haven't gotten a chance to play because again, you guys know, like I do GTRP, I do the variety it's Mario month and I've ba barely played Mario. I have major, I have a whole lot of other stuff that I do on my stream as opposed to just, wow. So, um, uh, I just really haven't had the time to do it, but, um, but yeah, no, I, I think that, uh, I, I think that that's kind of like a, a common misconception that people, people play one or the other, but I do think a lot of people play both. So, yeah, yeah, it's been it's been uh, really really good. Yeah, I'm I'm curious how many people actively play both. I don't know. I don't know what the crossover is. Mm -hmm. I it's I had a goal going to Shadowlands. I was like, okay, I'm gonna try to clear the heroic raid. Every raid here of Shadowlands. I I really want to enjoy this, and it's so weird. Because, and I've heard this other from other people as well. It's like Shadowlands. I think for a retail expansion is really good. As far as retail, I think it's it's really good for retail players. But man, like, I personally, I think at this point I've accepted, like, you know, retail is just not for me personally. And it's fine. Like, not everyone has to like every game. And I'm not even going to shit on Shadowlands. I think it's good for what it is. But it's just not for me. It's yeah. the best type. The problem is, I, I compare it to fried chicken. So, like, fried chicken is good, but ultimately it has a cap on what it, and on how good it can be. Like, the best fried chicken, for example, in the world just it, it will not eclipse the best pizza because pizza has a <laughs> like, good good thing like ceiling you know more in my opinion yeah. plans is it's like it's at the peak it's like the best fried chicken out there but you know the ceiling is just not high enough for that type of game there's no community at the at the end of the looking for dungeon systems the automation the, the sharding the lack of a of a open world that's like actually like has content in it mm -hmm. um each other all that stuff all the things we love about classes that don't exist in shadowlands you know differentiates the game a lot but in I, terms I think of two different games yeah at this point yeah, they're totally different um uh, but classic is pizza in this case of course yeah yeah like i'm, I'm always gonna be more of a classic guy I just uh i i just i just don't th throw everything in retail yet because I, I i do like arenas now maybe that's just gonna change in burning crusade Right when now that we have arenas and stuff, because yeah. I've all, that's always been my favorite thing is arenas, and maybe that's why I'm I'm still like attached to retail in that regard is I like doing the arenas, but um, it's gonna be so much fun. And again, like let's let's uh so let's go into TBC a little bit, right? Uh, and, and kind of what we know so far, because we we have gone on a lot for we're just excited, dude. We're we're happy to be back. It's fun. We're kind of reminiscing <laughs> a little bit about classic, um, but let's move on to to TBC and really what the rest of the series is gonna be here in like season two, and um. What well, Blizzard has very clearly learned, let's go ahead and start this off, is let's let's talk about the fact that they're going with pre-nerf raid encounters. Because mm -hmm. that was, a, I think, a massive issue in Classic. The fact that everything was just so overwhelmingly easy. And yeah, it's going to be easier than, than you know, it's going to be easier than retail, right? Because retail is, you know, it's just a newer game, whatever. Sure, that's yeah. fine. We, we know everything. They don't know all the strategies and stuff yet. That's fine. I get it. But whenever you're making your character stronger and you're making the raids weaker, you're moving the goalpost in two separate directions, and it's it's so bad for the game. Like, uh, I, I thought Classic was uh, it was just weird, right? Like how uh, how hard people would push sometimes for something that is just seemingly like, eh, like you don't even have to do that, right? But you you kind of you don't you don't want to do that, but you kind of have to do. If other people are doing it, you have to do that because you have to pull your own weight and you have to like earn your spot in the the guild and get your uh, get your gear and earn the right to get stuff and it, it turns into a whole thing right uh but it's definitely something that's not um it's not as big of a deal i'll right? i'll tell you this like tbc has downsides i'm not a fan of flying mounts as, as one example right. but i think for the average vanilla player right now if you're like if you've never played tbc tbc is almost a perfect successor to vanilla wow like anything that you are it feels kind of missing from vanilla as far as like oh man i wish raids were a little bit harder i wish gold i wish the gold requirement to raid wasn't so high i wish class balance was a little bit better i wish there was more viability for me as a shadow priest or a boom can i or a red paladin i wish there was a better pvp system tbc delivers 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 on all that stuff mm -hmm. and i like tbc feels very very satisfying after after a year and a half of grinding vanilla yeah, yeah. and that's kind of 
them and to like the developers at the time for them to have the awareness of a lot of the issues that plagued original vanilla towards the end and fix the vast majority of them they introduced some new ones but they fixed the vast majority of them and i'm very excited like my personal experience with tbc vanilla came out when i was a freshman in high school by the time vanilla ended i was a junior applying for colleges trying to uh, up that gpa a little bit um i didn't experience very much of tbc mm -hmm. i played tbc the last couple of months before wrath of the lich king launched and in terms of private servers you know for those that, that are kind of in that world we had so many projects that were so disappointing that just never came to fruition you know core craft play tbc yeah. the server etc like so I never really, you know, there, there was things like Warmain and stuff like that, but those always... There, there hasn't really been a really good one. Yeah, there hasn't really been a really good until relatively recently, but yeah. just because we've been so busy and stuff, never got really a chance to play those ones. Yeah, we uh, can't stream it either, right? It's, it is exactly. a DMCA situation. That's like our whole story, right? So. Yeah, exactly. No one should. Blizzard actually just a week ago sent out a bunch of DMCAs to TBC private server streamers, so you should not stream private servers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's so it. Like, yeah. Go ahead, so I'm, I'm, excited. I'm really excited for TBC. Like, I, I a lot of it is going to be new for me. Like, uh, at least, you know, I, I, like for the content at the time, like, I don't know what a pre nerf Sunwell looks like because I never did Sunwell when it was relevant, you know? So, uh, that's, I'm very excited for that. And, uh, I've heard just from talking to some friends that, that have played a lot of TBC private servers, I've heard that maybe the pre nerf isn't quite enough. Maybe they need to, add a little bit of buffs on top of that to make it a little bit more challenging. But regardless, I think Blizzard taking that step is huge. And I think it shows their paradigm of thought is we want to make the classic experiences as faithful, but also as good as possible. And I think that's like just them crossing that barrier is so significant because I think it just means that the support for the classic projects have in has increased. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, as we move forward to like, classic wrath and perhaps redoing classic vanilla etc i think it means that when we get these new classic versions of the game they're hopefully going to be as good as they can possibly be and adjusted for the times yeah i uh i think so too and and uh like you said they've, they've clearly learned right with the the uh, desire to go pre-nerf they will still be doing end game 2.4 talents and spells and class balance and all that stuff and uh, that's something that I think is, is good. I do think that's, uh, that's a good idea. They just have to account for everything else, uh, not being that way. Uh, I, well, I, think... I want to say the, the alternative to running 2.4.3 talents and spells is like every month or every month and a half, whatever is people logging in and their talent trees being different. Yeah. And their spell coefficients being different. So it's like, yeah, if you want to be perfectly faithful to how it was, yeah, you would make the talent tree changes every patch or whatever. It's like, but is that really... Mm -hmm. good in in today's climate yeah probably not i don't know yeah i i don't think it's a good idea i i think that um now you could make the same argument about something else that i do disagree with or i mean they didn't mention right but um you know with them constantly changing something and then you have to relearn or whatever uh but i do think relearning class mechanics or your talents and stuff like that is very different than having to have a little bit weaker gear and I do think that they're still probably not going to do progressive monetization, which I think is actually a mistake. It's not as big of an issue as it is in Classic. Classic had way more patches, way more changes in gear, uh, a, a massive difference in power creep from the beginning and the end. But there is some of that in Burning Crusade, and uh, a lot of the raid gear ended up getting upgraded. Even, I think it was in 2.1, right? It was almost right away, like, some stuff got upgraded. And if you guys remember, uh, I remember a lot of heroic gear being better than Karazhan gear like individual pieces because of itemization or whatever and yeah, having sure. dungeon gear, also badge gear and badge gear as well having dungeon gear that was competitive with raid gear i think is a good thing because it makes you want to play the entirety of the game in order to get all the best gear that you can and the same thing goes for pvp gear as well so like i think in in general a good design philosophy to have for the game is for your character to be as well geared and as powerful and as um decorated as possible they would have to do every single part of the game which is something that retail i don't think does particularly well right now but in classic wow you see it a little bit but especially in burning crusade you see it a lot there's way better dungeon gear from people doing heroics there's badge gear like you mentioned there's uh good raid gear 
and there's then reputation also gear there's rep raid gear, gear there's profession gear and then of course pvp gear like j simply put the player progression system in tbc between profession gear badge gear raid gear dungeon gear heroic dungeon gear reputation gear pvp gear bg gear arena gear it all molds together it's so satisfying i'm gonna say and i mm -hmm. i kind of like vanilla wow slightly more than tbc mm -hmm. but i gotta like i love tbc still i gotta say this there in my opinion is no more fun like two or three month period in wow's history ever than the first two or three months of tbc it is so insanely fun progressing your character up really and getting your reputations and oh man it's so fun it is really really fun and uh yep. i like for me like i'm a burning crusade guy like that's whenever i like uh I, I i peaked back in the day i peaked in high school right and it was during burning crusade so that's like I was I was highly rated in arenas and I was you know the rep howling guy and I was getting my world buffs and uh what I I've logged into WoW and world buff just went off that's what that sound was yeah congrats thank you guys okay um so <laughs> um so yeah that's basically uh that's basically what I was all about I was always all about burning crusade and um I'm very, uh, I'm very, very excited about Burning Crusade coming for sure. And and with them doing the itemization this way, some people were saying retail do, does do that. Retail doesn't do exactly what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is you you get the best from doing everything, not the best, not being able to be the best doing one thing. That's what I'm talking about. Whereas in retail, like like I was like I said, like like with my character, with my my character's item level being super high. I only did PvP, and my character was number one paladin on the server. I didn't raid at all. I didn't do LFR, I didn't do normal, I didn't do, well, actually, I did do normal, and I think I did, no, no, I think I just did normal, but I didn't even do the whole raid, didn't do, didn't do heroic, didn't do mythic, and my character was, like, the, the most geared guy on uh, retail, right, and that's just how it was, I, I pre-made group finder in my way to 2300, and then after that, I, I uh, group of people that I, like, I played with Bajir a little bit at the end, and, and all that, but, um, and I was just, I just got good RNG, you know, so and that's how it works because I got I had good chess and whatnot. But my point is, is that uh, I, I think Burning Crusade does do it really well. And uh, yeah, I, I saw someone have this concern in chat a minute ago. I want to say, despite what I just mentioned, uh, you can be a very very successful PvPer. Like you don't have to PvP to be a top PvPer in arena, and you don't have like you don't have to have arena gear to be a top PvE or to parse. So it's not like in vanilla, right? If you want to do you know, top in black when they are speed runs or any speed runs, actually, you don't have to get rank 14, right? You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. that's kind of how it is in vanilla. That crossover isn't really there and until you get to like war glaives in season six or in, in, uh, in black temple, but that's stupid anyway. So, yeah. Um, I do think it's good. Like sometimes people would go with like PVP armor and stuff and have high stamina and resilience and then do like some PVE trinkets for like burst mm -hmm. damage or whatever. Um, I do like how gear. I do like how gear is itemized. I think it's. I think it's uh, really good for the most part. Not a huge fan of resilience in general. Like as a stat, I didn't like it, but maybe it was necessary at the time. And I can't. I can't remember it. Like in, in hindsight, like how uh, uh, how big of an impact it, it maybe wouldn't have made if there was no no resilience. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what. Like go go queue a BG right now mm -hmm. and see and the damage people are doing, and you'll understand why they added resilience. Right? And, and that's kind of what I'm thinking. It's like maybe that was it. But they also, you know, what else they did was they changed the value of itemization points to, uh, or they changed the value of stamina and itemization points to make, uh, that's why there was so much more stamina on gear in Burning Crusade is because I think they made it like one and a half times like what a strength would be or an intellect or mm -hmm. something like that. So who knows? Uh, but I think that's a really good point. That's kind of why I'm thinking that maybe it was like that. We did talk about classic era servers already. And um, we, what we didn't talk about, and I think this kind of goes without saying, but people do still want to hear it, is they have talked about the, uh, they, they've talked about, they're not necessarily planning on stopping at Burning Crusade. They're, mm -hmm. you know, they're, yeah. they're open to, to continuing on after that, uh, Wrath of Lich King, whatever. Uh, and and I, I think that for me, I will probably stop. I don't know if I'm going to actually stop after Wrath. I might stop before Wrath. I have no idea. Because back in the day, that's kind of whenever I got bored. I, I quit at the beginning of Wrath. And uh, mm -hmm. I came back at the very end, and that was kind of like the point in time whenever I was kind of like drifting away from WoW, and kind of like what happened to Tips. Like for me, like I, I was it was my senior year of high school, and I was doing the football thing, and uh, I just kind of like stepped away from from WoW in general for a while. Like I, I played League of Legends mostly right after Cataclysm came out, and uh, 
I do regret not playing Wrath. If I could go back in time, I wish I could play Wrath. But uh, so that is one reason why, like, I'm I'm am looking forward to playing Wrath and kind of applying like what I know now and being able to play the game that I do now um, to that I think game. But play Wrath, you like PvP? I think you'll enjoy it. But Wrath needs a lot of changes, and that's why I'm very mm-hmm. happy with PBC because hopefully that's just the beginning of how far they're willing to push the button. Like yeah. Wow from top down needs buffs across the board from the normal dungeons to the heroic dungeons to the raids to the heroic raids like you think, you think it was just way too easy pve way too easy i mean uh nax ramus and wrath in my opinion is easier than molten core in classic that's Believe what everybody or- said everybody said they like it was literally within like 12 hours of people hitting max level uh people were clearing nax it was like ridiculous in wrath Yes, it is so easy. And anyone that's played on a Wrath private server recently can attest to this. Um, on most Wrath private servers nowadays, they buff the content not by 5, not by 10, by over 50%, and they add new mechanics. So 50% boss damage, boss health, etc., and they add new mechanics to challenge you. Because Wrath was like, it was at the transition point before WoW came like fully into the modern era, and content really started to scale up. It kind of still was clinging a little bit to like the original mechanics of old. So it just, in terms of PVE content, it has not aged well at all. Like they really need to buff it. But in terms of class design and PVP, Wrath has is really good. Like yeah. really. I yeah, think. Like, uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry, I thought you were done. No, that's that's what you said. Well, I, what I was going to say is I think one reason that they probably wanted to make – they probably didn't make Nax easy on purpose because they're like, it's the intro raid one, but also, like, they worked really hard on it, and they were like, this thing was this amazing thing in Classic, and we want more people to experience it and see it. And uh, I, I think that's probably why they made it easy, but then they ended up just, like, way overshooting it and making, making it way too easy. Because I do remember hearing that, too, that people cleared Nax, like, right away. It was, like, far and away, like, the fastest a first raid has ever been cleared. Um, I think Ra- in any in any expansion, actually, right? Because wasn't wasn't Cataclysm the opposite? It was too hard at the beginning because they probably You're learned right. from that and they probably made everything too hard to overcompensate. And they're like, wait a second. So that's exactly what happened. So like, if you look at it like as a pendulum, and this is how Ghost Crawler described it in his post, I remember, like the pendulum with Wrath was like just swung to like completely easy mode, casualize the game you know, cast a wide net on this new audience that had been introduced to WoW and online mm-hmm. gaming. So they just casualized the whole experience. And then they realized by the end, for the first time, I think the last quarter before Cata launched, the subs either peaked and they st- like they stagnated or they might have dropped a little bit. I can't remember. Um, but then, so they swung it the completely different direction and Cataclysm, for its time, Tier 11 was like really challenging. Like it was probably the hardest first tier of any expansion until shadowlands i think uh uh rate, whatever it's called the the raid today mm-hmm. what's the raid in shadowlands called the castle uh, castle nathria castle nathria yeah i think castle nathria today was probably is probably the hardest ever for the first raid of an expansion but at that point it was it was kata and they nerfed everything and then mm-hmm. from there anyway yeah, I. Uh... You want to know a really hot nuclear spicy hot take? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think the hardest raid in vanilla WoW, in classic WoW, when you're wearing that raid's prebis, is molten core. I think molten core and molten core prebis is harder than Nax in Nax prebis. Mm-hmm. You think so? Like mm-hmm. if okay, this is say molten core in full dungeon blues is harder than Nax in full AQ40 uh, bis gear. What what are you talking? We cleared we cleared molten core stay safe. You and I we cleared molten core at like, like we had people in the raid that were like level fifty five, fifty six. Yeah, I, I for me I, I think <laughs> those were like some seven hour raids, dude. <laughs> they were That's they true. were okay. So okay, I see what you're saying. You're saying, you're saying that the raids compared to like the the top end, like it, the raids took much longer. Mm-hmm. Like originally, like MC took way longer than a first clear of Nax is what you're talking about. I okay. I kind of. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm I, under, I actually I, I understand. Think, I, think I understand what people... you're saying. I understand your argument. I I disagree. I I think I think Nax is like the best, the perfect difficulty for how hard it should have been going into uh, that patch. I, I I disagree, but I actually do understand what you're saying because the argument. Correct me if I'm wrong. That you're making is uh, 
basically whenever you did that first clear of MC, it was much more difficult than your first clear of Nax having everything going in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, Nax, uh, like, like I said, like doing Molten Core with your full, you know, pre-Molten Core dungeon bis gear, right? Uh -huh. I think Molten Core is harder in that environment than Nax is in full AQ40 bis, which is your Nax pre bis gear, right? I think I think the difference is, I think uh, for me, I, I think I think Nax Nax is harder and it's and it's a lot better and all this stuff. But I think the difference comes from something that we touched on early on, which was uh, the preparation and how much it costs to do Nax, right? And mm -hmm. I think that in Molten Core, you have people that yeah, it costs more to do Nax and all this stuff, and it can cause some difficulty there and just like having your stuff. But uh, mm -hmm. I think in Molten Core, a lot of people didn't expect, like, oh, I don't have my fire protection. I don't have this. Oh, I don't. I got to go douse, right? And you got to people go run back and forth to douse, and that takes some time. Um, that's what I think the difference is. Because uh, while, while I do think it, like, almost costs too much to raid Nax now, I think that mm -hmm. um, I, 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 I think that it mostly comes down to that. Like, it's extraneous things, and it's not necessarily gear. Well, so. here, here's another question. Like, you see people in Twitch chat or whatever pipe up and say, oh, man, like, the, uh, dude, these raids are too easy. They should be way harder. Let me ask you this. Like, do you think people are playing Classic WoW to have hard raids where they have to progress for weeks or months? Or do you think people kind of like easy raids in vanilla where you can just go in and, like, have a beer while you're raiding and raid with one hand and shit post with your boys yeah. in, in Discord mid-raid and just kind of, like, zone out and have fun? Yeah. I think the majority of Classic players... If they want to have hard raid, they go play Shadowlands. Yeah, if you I want think, to have a fun a raid, point. you play vanilla. You know. Yeah, that's I think, true. I think it's a really good point. Go ahead, tips. Uh, I completely agree with you. Uh, I actually think that making raids ultra hard takes away so much from MMOs. Like, think about retail WoW. Because the raids, the mythic raids at the highest end are so difficult, it puts a tremendous burden on the class designers to make sure everything is balanced. Yeah, it all. Puts, right. uh, that's a really good point. Yeah, like. Uh, it makes it so you cannot have out of you know flavor of the month specs because you know you just won't be able to clear the raids because they're tuned so high. So I definitely agree that having raids not be super insanely hard uh, uh, is a good thing, but I do think it's a spectrum. I think if we were to look at it like from classic, I do think molten core BWL are a little bit too easy. What I would have liked to see, or maybe in future classic, is the degree of difficulty of Molten Core be kind of closer to the degree of difficulty of AQ and things scale from there. So like, let's say Molten Core is like a three right now, BWL is like a five, AQ is like a seven, Nax is a 10. Like mm -hmm. just throwing out our numbers. Like it would be cool if Molten Core started off like as a seven or, you know, seven and a half or whatever, something like that. And then they all scale proportionally upwards. It's, I think it's it's so frustrating for a lot of people because th when we say difficulty, like the, a lot of the difficulty with these raids in classic vanilla WoW is whether or not you have your world buffs and whether or not you're spending a thousand gold a week on consumes, right? So it's like, what is what really is hard, you know? Yeah. It's like, yeah, Saffron is kind of easy if you're everyone's fully consumed, spamming consumes, and you still have your world buffs. Otherwise, uh, like, yeah, Saffron's kind of annoying for a lot of guilds, you know? Yeah, I yeah. mean, uh, like we. Uh... I mean, like for for the longest time, we would go and try and rebuff for Saffron, just like not full, but like we would go mm -hmm. get an Ixia and drop just drop a head and a heart, right? And uh, that that helped majorly for Saffron and KT. Um, I think that there's a line. I, th I I agree with you. I think that Classic isn't a lot of the people playing Classic don't want to do this like super hard raids. They want to they want to hang out with people and they want to have a good time. And and it's 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 very much about community, right? I think that with a, um, I, I think that with WoW Classic, what they probably should have done is they probably should have made it like ten to twenty percent harder in the raids leading up to Nax. I think Nax is perfect, but I think pretty much every other raid is uh, just just a little bit too easy. I think I think it doesn't need to be hard. It just needs mm -hmm. to be more than just a complete like face roll cakewalk. Um, like people talk about how you don't need to move at all or there's no mechanics. I mean, that's that's not necessarily the case. But what does happen is because our gear is so good, even the pre-raid gear is much stronger than it was back in the day. We kind of, we can just like straight up ignore some mechanics. Like, you know, um, Golmag and MC is a good example where it's, most people don't even know the mechanics of Golmag because it, it like it's it's so tank and spank. You don't have to worry about your, your stacks. You don't like, 
just move the dogs away. That's how most people think Golmag works because it's our gear is so good we do so much damage, but it, it's not supposed to be like that, you know? Yeah. yeah. I think just a little bit more resistance to make it so your brain has to be active and you've got to be aware and there's a small possibility of a wipe. I think that's good. But I, I agree with Stay Safe that dragging it to the opposite direction of, you know, make every raid like it's freaking, you know, Mythic Castle Nathria. No, I, I don't. I don't think that's a good idea, and I think that would actually hurt Classic a lot specifically because, you know, if you think that people are asking for a lot of warriors and rogues now, that's just the high end guilds. It will be everybody if raids were that hard. Like you wouldn't be able to play. S I wouldn't be able to play Red Paladin. A lot of people wouldn't be able to play meme specs just because the content would be. It would require you to play the app right. best all the time. Like all that stuff that people act like matters. People act like it matters it would actually matter <laughs> like because a lot of the stuff that you see on on youtube videos and these guides and oh you have to play this way and have to play that way like I, and i've always been a pretty big um i guess uh what i guess what is, i guess opponent of that right as opposed to a proponent of that uh i've been i've been pretty opposed to it where it's like no like dude just just play your game right the only thing that matters is the group of people that you play with have to be willing to play the game the same way that you want to play right and um as long as you have that, that's that's all that really matters, right? Like you can be mm -hmm. a feral or a boomkin or a rat, and especially going into Burning Crusade, right? Uh, especially going into Burning Crusade, there's uh, there's a lot of room for uh, these off specs, right? They get buffed so much, especially in the utility aspect of it, like for a rat paladin, um, where like you know the, the damage is still not going to be like a pure DPS class in a lot of ways, but it doesn't really matter because the overall raid damage is is affected very positively by it. Um, Let's go ahead and, you know, again, continue to talk about Burning Crusade a little bit. Uh, I know, Tips, you have, a, you have a meeting to go to, and uh, Stay Safe is going to go stream later today, and then, I, and then I have my stuff that I want to do. So we don't want to go too long for our first episode, and there's going to be so much to talk about, right? Uh, but this, this episode we kind of kind of have as a uh, classic recap and then going into Burning Crusade a little bit. Um, one thing that I think we can talk about is the level boost. The, the level 58 boost that they announced. They said one per account, you can have a level 58 boost, and there's a lot of discussion about this. Um, it's very much not classic, like a, like a not a classic mindset to have boosts and whatnot. And uh, it's like seemingly throwing away the old world. And the intent, this is the important thing, I think the intent for them is we want to have players who did not play classic get a chance to come in and play Burning Crusade and not feel behind. Okay. Um, then launch fresh TBC servers. I think it accomplishes that same goal. See, you launch a fresh TBC. Well, server. I actually don't like fresh TBC for a number of reasons, but I know why people do want fresh TBC. So go ahead and, and, um, you, you go ahead and expand on that tips for sure. So, um, basically I think everyone that's progressed so far in classic should be able to take their characters and transfer to a TBC server and continue progressing on that character. But I think you should have a very small but secure number of fresh TBC servers, let's say one or two, just to be, you know, make it simple. Um, for all the new players that are coming into TBC for the first time, or for those that just really enjoyed the fresh experience and want to start, you know, want to play on a server where the economy isn't completely busted, uh, those players have an opportunity to roll on this one, you know, or two fresh TBC servers. Uh, it solves the issue of like, you know, being behind. For some people that didn't get to farm the hundreds of thousands of gold that some classic players have now, they don't have to worry about that. And for the players that just really like the, the progression experience, leveling out in the world, doing the quests, dungeoning up, feeling that, you know, 200 hour leveling journey, they get to experience that again with other people. So I think that would be cool, but uh, but obviously we're not getting that. Well, and I it think feels, go ahead, it feels really weird during their little Q&A where they introduced the 58 boost and stuff, that little interview they had during BlizzCon. Over the course of like 60 seconds, they go from talking about, yeah, we're going to have a TBC pre-patch. You can level your Drenai and you can level your Blood Elf if you're new to the game to get caught up so you're not left behind when the dark portal opens. 60 seconds later, and if you're new to the game, we're going to sell 58 boost. Like, the, it, it's it was just very like... What they should have done, it said, hey, listen, we're going to have a month-long pre-patch, level your Dren your, your Drenai, level your Blood Elf, XP is nerfed by 30, this is what, this is actually what happens, yeah, XP, XP from 1 to 60 is nerfed by 30%, we had new quest hubs, a lot of quest rewards reward higher XP, they should have sold the pre-patch as the time to come back, it's easier to level, there's Blood Elves and Drenais to play with, you get caught up with your friends, who, like, who, you know, at, 
it's so it's so annoying. Actually, at, like at the end of TBC, they had the recruiter friend system. Why mm -hmm. not just add the recruiter friend system rather than just selling straight up XP boosts? Yeah. I don't know, man. Like it, it just uh, uh, it, it uh, just does not like logically stand. I think it's just a simple cast. So right? here's I think it's really bad for the game too. I think what they need to do. I, I don't like the idea of fresh because. I, We've seen fresh private servers. the The population imbalance is horrible. It's so bad. Like sixty forty horde alliance, seventy thirty horde alliance. It's so bad, and it's something that I think is going to be a huge, huge issue going into Burning Crusade. If, uh, if you don't have like the desire to like, oh, I want to keep playing my character that I've been working on. I have like these accomplishments. I have a certain gear that's going to carry over all this stuff. And I think if they just make some servers separately of that. Uh, I, I just don't know if it's a good idea because I'm not a huge like whenever people say split the player base and stuff like that. I'm not a huge like person who's like that, but I do think it's kind of um, I think it kind of makes a weird experience and it kind of sets a weird precedent to precedent to where you're going to end up having a bunch of different like shards and like fractures of it. I think that uh, a level 58 boost is the wrong decision. And uh, but I do understand why they want to do it. I, and I actually agree. I think that having something like that is going to bring a lot of people into the game that otherwise would not be into the game. But a boost that starts you at level 58 and, and you gotta you go into freaking Hellfire Peninsula and you're trying to run a Ramparts group and then you have some, some guy who, you know, it's not his fault, but he just boosted and he hasn't played before, right? You get one per account. He hasn't played before. He's now, I've got this level 58... A uh, boosted warrior who's who's now tanking my ramparts at level sixty, and he just doesn't know how to play his class yet. And then I end up, and I don't know that. I have no idea. I I, oh, I, okay. I have no you, idea. You, so that's why I think a boost is 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 really really bad in that regard. Now, what I think would work that would complete, uh, uh, it, it would do their goal, right? It would do their goal of being able to get people into the game and uh, not being too far behind or whatever. Add an XP boost. Like you said, there's already the 30% decrease in XP that you need. Add an XP boost. They can they get a one-time, one character. They pay for it a lot, like the recruit a friend thing, like you said, which I do think they should probably add into the game anyway. They should probably add in recruit a friend anyway. Um, but something like that is fine. And and it'll be a massive XP boost. And yeah, they can zoom through it, but you have a whole month of pre-patch. Like uh, that, that recent endless TBC server just came out with like eight times XP. I, I played for a day casually, just like running around. Um while I was off and I got, I don't even know how many hours I played. I just got level 30, like not even paying attention. Right. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's very, it doesn't need to be eight times XP, but having a big boost like that will easily give players enough time in a one to two month pre-patch to be able to level. And I, and I think that'll be totally fine. And, and it'll be way better than just starting at level 50. I think, I think let's start 58. I think that's not a good idea. Yeah, I think, you know, like setting the precedent in these classic versions of WoW, where you're telling people you can spend real life money to not it's I wouldn't call it pay to win, but it's definitely pay to advance or pay to have success or pay to save time. Like, I think it's 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 just a bad idea. I, I think it undermines the entire like sort of virtual hierarchy that a lot of people play MMOs for in the first place. I also know for a fact that this is a very, very profitable investment for botters to make. Like it is super worth it for botters to buy a 50 at boost and then do their botting on the boost. It's super profitable if you break it down. And then it's also like, you know, if I have a thousand gold, I want to spend a bunch of money on new accounts and boosts. By the way, I've heard people say in chat, it's a free boost. It is not a free boost. It is one paid boost per account. They haven't mm -hmm. said how much it costs, but you know, you, you can like, you can spend a bunch of money on boost and you can start pumping out cloth. You can pump out primal mites. You can pump like, it is so easy to exploit these boosts to make a lot of gold in game or to start up your botting operation, which I already know people are thinking of doing so. Yeah. I'm telling you, yeah, but I, I don't think Blizzard, frankly, cares a whole lot because like it's, oh, admit, like their sub numbers for WoW are gonna blow up. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, it's gonna How be many nuts. people are gonna make new accounts just for the boost, right? I mean, there's gonna be so Insane. many people playing and, and people like, oh, I played on this server in, in one expansion, or sorry, in classic, and then and then now the new expansion is coming, I have friends on another server, I, I'll just throw my boost over there. Um, mm -hmm. Again, I think I think you fix the potential problem of the things that I mentioned, plus potential overpopulation of certain servers where random Joe Schmo is playing the game for the first time. He's like, I'm just going to go throw a character on there because I'm level 58 now and I don't have to level up or whatever. Uh, and and ser potential server issues where people are just like crammed into one area because and, uh, maybe that doesn't even matter that much because 
you have so many people at max level anyway it's not gonna matter but uh like at that point like it's just like a fraction but my, just, my point is i just think an xp boost is so much better i think i think it wakes, I, makes way more sense it, it gets their what they want to happen it makes that happen and um everybody's happy right i just saw someone in chat say that selling boosts is going to decrease gold buying okay so you buy the boost you're level 58 they've already said you don't have an epic mount you have no gold you have terrible dungeon gear with no enchants you don't have professions everyone else has thousands of gold because they've been prepping and playing through vanilla wow you could not create a higher risk gold buying demographic than someone who just bought a level 50 at boost like yeah. you have no skills in the game you don't know what to do you have no professions you have a terrible mount you have terrible gear you just yeah. you j literally just spent real life money to advance your character so that precedent is already in your brain a lot of these guys first thing they boost go buy gold like yeah. for real gold, gold <laughs> buying is is a really really bad yeah. issue by the way it's it, it's very prevalent yeah, but um, it's and it's it's so prevalent to the point where if they introduce the wow token i think more like i think i honestly believe we are the vocal minority by the way against the boosts i think i agree the, the vast majority of people are happy about it and they're excited. And I, I strongly believe that if a WoW token was introduced in TBC, the vast majority of people would, would be excited or at the very least, they would be just like, they would hand away. They're like, oh, it's not a big deal. Well, people you know what already... I think would happen? I think I think people would publicly condemn it and secretly be happy about it. That's what I think would happen. Because that that there is like a weird, like and it's 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 not around as much. But you guys know, if you've been playing Classic WoW, and I didn't notice this as much on private, but but as like the, the WoW Classic community kind of grew, specifically not necessarily the vanilla WoW community and all this stuff, there was like this weird sense of like high roading and um, it was very, very strange. And people will go and they will like publicly act a certain way or like the same thing happened with no changes, right? Where people would talk about this stuff, but then like they, they would feel like pressured or bullied into saying certain things because that is just, you know, what they felt like they had to do. And uh, I, I don't think that's right. You know, like they felt like because of public opinion, they had to they had to go with that. Um, so I don't know. That's what I think. And I, I think I think the, the WoW token, I don't know 100% if it's a good idea or not. But I do know this. I do know that it was far and away uh, the most effective way of combating gold buyers and sellers in, uh, in retail WoW over the years. Yeah not true uh, i mean it probably was the most effective way but there are so many gold sellers still in retail well there are like, but it but it but it hurt it a lot like they yeah. like because because i i, I talked to somebody oh. uh, about this like statistically and and like somebody from blizzard and they uh they said like it was just like it, it's just in the stats right like because they could go you know what else it did it what hugely else? increased the number of people buying gold though legitimately like there are so yeah. many people right now that would want to buy gold but they don't want to go to a taboo third-party gold site. They don't want to potentially get scammed. They don't want to potentially get banned. So the second it's legitimately offered through an in-game service, like the in-game shop, yeah. they're like, yeah, hell yeah, sign True. me up. So yeah, it might have like, it might have stopped third-party gold buying, but gold buying, but it introduced a ton of new people to it as well in-game. Yeah, and I yeah. think, um, yes, you're right. Uh, I think that um, the the thing is if somebody is like farming the gold legitimately and it's not being botted and there's like not weird stuff going on for people to get it then they see it as like kind of like a, i mean at least somebody's actually like farming it and i don't know this this ends up being a whole discussion i don't i don't 100 percent know where i stand on it myself but um i don't know i i think i think that may end up being a discussion that like we may actually be having for real um who knows how long down the road, maybe a year down the road or something. Uh, right yeah. now, I don't think they're going to do it, but uh, it may end up being a real discussion someday. And that is yeah. my, big, that, that sums up my concern for the boost in the short term. I do think it has effects on the game that are going to be negative, um, but it's really about the precedent that it sets and the long-term impact. What else is going to come up on the shop? I personally think a wow token is inevitable. I think it'll come one day for classic servers. I think, maybe some cosmetics down the line you never know mm -hmm. uh at this point, classic is such a it, it's it hasn't become the cow's cow that it could be but the interest is there from the player base so blizzard's probably looking at it from just like a spreadsheet perspective like let's say they're making just hypothetical numbers let's say they're making you know 
10 million dollars a month right now on classic if you add a level boost if you add a wow token you got some cosmetics that 10 million could become 100 million like that's that's the the potential that classic has to farm them cash so if you're in their shoes and again you're, you're profit driven and you report to investors fiduciary responsibility etc you would be an absolute fool not to introduce these features especially when again i don't think they will be they will be overwhelmingly contested i think as like us a lot of streamers etc will speak out against them but i think there's a lot of people right now that are already buying wow gold classic gold they're very happy for the boosts they wouldn't mind some cosmetics in the game i think that yeah see and and that's for me like that's like a whole thing where it's like now now we're going down the rabbit hole and and kind of what you're saying it's like what precedent does it set and and what all is going on but no you're right there there are a lot of people buying gold and it is it is uh there there is a silent group of people out there who are just they don't really they don't really care they're like okay i'll just buy the gold because for them it's like i i go work a job and i make x amount of dollars per hour i can't make that much gold in that many hours it like like if i work for an hour i can make more money working for an hour than like I can't make that much gold per dollar. Like it doesn't convert. So for them, they're like, yeah, I'll just go buy it. Who cares? Yeah. You know? And for them, it's about saving time. And, uh, but like, you, you don't really hear from those people. So I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know where that's going to go. I don't know. I'm, I, I feel like I'm, I really feel like an odd man out at this point. Like I think for a lot of people, the initial, maybe not these days, but the initial traction of MMOs or just gaming in general was it didn't matter how hot you were in real life or how tall or how short, or how much money you had. In the yeah. gaming world, all that mattered was really just like how good of a gamer you are, right? Yeah. And so the second you have people that people like say have a rich dad or a trust fund kid or whatever, is if you can just swipe your credit card to success, it undermines the entire thing, right? right. And that 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 you know online e you know or e even playing field, so to speak, is completely undermined. Right. And I, I think like I, here's here's a here's a stupid thing like it's it has like a psychological effect as well. I love farming golden classic. I I think there's a, it's a skill thing. You can be good at it. You can be bad at it. There's smart people. There's bad people at it. Like I love farming gold. It's one of my favorite activities, and I consider myself good at it. But knowing that other people are buying gold and it's so rampant, or I see on some other person's stream an item go for 30k gold and a GDKP, and like talking about WoW token, it demotivates me from farming gold. Knowing that people can just buy a hundred times more gold than I can farm in a day. You know what I mean? Just instantaneously. I feel like it. It. It actually sort of ruins my gameplay. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. yeah. As someone that exclusively runs Nax GDKPs, like I, I don't run them myself, <laughs> I participate in them. The amount of gold that people have in these runs is mind boggling. The pot every mm -hmm. single week is between like 180 to 270,000 gold. We had a Gressel drop two weeks ago and it sold for 170, 175k. And like everyone is just decked out in gold. It's insane. Uh, it, it's crazy. Like these are. It, it's, it's ridiculous now. Yeah, it's it's so dumb, and that's that's like to, why. Sorry, sorry. I thought you were done. Continue. Well, just real quick to understand how much that is in classic, 170k was a lot in classic. It was a lot in Burning Crusade. It was a lot in Wrath of the Lich King. It was a lot in Cataclysm, and it was a lot in Mists of Pandaria. Like that, it's like 10 years worth of being rich. You know what I'm saying? Like that's how insane that number is. And it... yeah, it's 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 yeah. really really dumb. It's uh, it's really, really dumb. People just have so much more gold. And again, this is something on private servers that that uh, like they did this on Lights Hope and they did this on Nost. They made specific changes uh, to certain gold gold farming methods to where it wouldn't spin out of control like this. And this is something we again we talked about this on Classic. Well, they also had, they also had bot detection software that Blizzard just is not implementing for whatever <laughs> yeah. reason. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, I, I don't know if you, if you guys go to the auction house, you're buying your consumables to go raid next to Amazon. You're like, oh wow, a flask is 250 gold. Like it's, this elixir is 20 gold. It's like crazy you're, you're now. Pri you're you're priced out of just playing the game at a basic level. It's because of these of these gold buyers. It's because of these insane GDKPs circulating the gold buyer gold into no other other normal people's pockets that aren't necessarily buying gold, but they're like they're. It, it's just uh, like the entire system is ruined at this point. Yeah, I, I can't it's, blame it's, anyone it's for saying this. screw next Ramus. I'm not rating next Ramus. Like I can't blame anyone for saying yeah. that. Yeah, like it, it can be cool raid. Completely all that shot, stuff, but it's just too much. You're right, 100. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's 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 very very difficult and. Uh, it's fine, right? And a lot of people like to play it and they like to do all that stuff, but it's it's a very reasonable argument against I just don't have time to to, to raid anymore because I don't have time to farm and get ready and whatnot. Um, well, people say that I don't have time for it and then they're like, yeah, but I want to keep doing it. I'll just, I'll go buy gold also. 
you know? Mm -hmm. So it, it breeds other gold buyers just to do the base activities that they want to do, like raid next Ramus once a week. Right. Um, um, so. Yeah. So hopefully, hopefully that's not like a real discussion that we have to have, but uh, I, I don't know. I mean, just, just knowing like what I, what, what I've heard from people and, and whatnot and, unfortunately player behavior so far right there are a lot of people buying gold like who knows if that ends up being a real discussion or not um even even if it's not something that like we would want to see necessarily um <clears throat> a couple more things to talk about uh the, the big point of discussion everybody talks about the leather working drums right everybody talks about leather working drums and are they going to nerf this people feel like it, engineering and classic is a little bit different the same but different Right, a lot of people think like, oh, you need engineering for a fight like Viscidus, right? And everybody sappers everything, and um, a lot of a lot of high end raiders have engineering. Engineering in classic helps fill a lot of gaps that a lot of the character, like other players, have, and it almost makes you. Uh, engineering is almost like a point of balance in the game. Like I can do things with my paladin as an engineer that I can't do, but as a paladin normally, but it helps. Like you know, I can do the gnome net, or I can. Uh, uh, I can throw grenades, right? Something as simple as that. And uh, I do think engineering is a little bit different. But leather working is something that's very... Not everybody wants to be a leather worker. It's not something that like uh, helps everybody out, mostly equally. But it's it's about the drums. And uh, they have said that they are planning on doing something to drums, but not exactly what yet. They don't know. I, I think if they put a debuff on it where, where you can you know do it X amount of time, I don't know, I don't know what they would do, right? But a lot like... Uh, uh, like they have heroism in retail, like how heroism works in retail where you have like a 10 minute timer, I think it is. Um, I, I think something like that, some kind of debuff would probably be a good idea. What do you guys yeah. think? Yeah, I think comparing leatherworking to engineering, I don't see many people do it. I think it's a dumb comparison. Like with engineering, you get a lot of value in a lot of different ways. With 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 leatherworking, you just get drums and it's just like a very you know restrictive or conversely prohibitive type of gameplay it's you're burning a profession slot that otherwise could be used on something really really cool that you might enjoy mm. um i don't know anyone that's angry about the leatherworking change even like hardcore tbc yeah. indies they're all happy about this i think this is a really good change i, I they positive. didn't say what it, what specifically they're going to do for it but um i think they'll probably just put the two minute debuff on the back end so to make it so instead of 20 leather workers if you're min maxing you only need five i guess in your yeah, min max like, like one yeah yeah. I think I think something like that would be a good idea. Having some form of a debuff, uh, and I think like like uh, Stacey have said, the overwhelming majority of people think this is a good change and, and something positive. You know what else I think is a very good change, and I think it's going to be very exciting and leads back to one of the periods of WoW Classic that I'm going to be probably the most excited about going forward, even going into TBC is pre-patch. You can level a Draenei or a Blood Elf Paladin or Shaman in the pre-patch. And that mm -hmm. is going to be so fun. I'm telling you, I, I hope pre-patch is two months long. I, I, I actually hope it's two months long. I think it would be so much fun because it's going to be a unique experience. We are never going to get it again, right? We are never going to get it again. And being able to raid with shamans in your group for Alliance, paladins in your group for uh, for Horde, I, I just think it's going to be a very cool experience. Like for me, I'm, I'm planning on doing a lot of viewer raids. Stay safe. I'm sure you're going to be doing the same thing, like viewer raids, group stuff. There's going to be events. It's going to be this this whole new experience, very unique to this. Hopefully, I, I would hope two month period in uh, in Classic WoW that we're again probably never going to get again. And uh, I, I for me, I, I want to do that so much. I want to do TBC and stuff too. But but pre patch is oh, it's going to be so fun doing Nax and pre patch, doing the raids and pre patch. Uh, for me, I play Paladin. Paladins get buffed a, a lot for rep Paladins and prop Paladins. So uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be very very cool, and I think it's gonna be very very exciting. Um, and uh, th again, this is just stuff like we're we're kind of touching on things that that have been announced already, but kind of giving our own uh, thoughts and opinions on them going forward as kind of like an introductory to season two. So um, of, of classic cast here, is there uh, is there anything specifically that you guys are looking forward to in either pre patch or TBC that you guys really want to do? Dips. Just, just like the the events, and like you said, Svan, you hit the nail on the freaking head. I think we're gonna do a lot uh, of stuff. Yeah, there, there's like this is a this is gonna be a great era for a while. I think arguably it already has been. And I tweeted about this a couple weeks back, like with classic coming back. Now you have at the bare minimum, you know, two wow or on average one wow expansion coming out every year. That on its own is tremendous. You've got good changes and good support being added to these games. So many potential versions of these games coming out. 
We've got pre-patch in the immediate future, TBC afterwards. Like, I'm just excited for this new era of WoW that we've been entering. And uh, I, think the, I think the game is just... It's crazy to think that 17 years later, the game has possibly never been more popular than it is right now, potentially. Mm-hmm. Um, and the accounts have reflected that in, in recent, you know, earnings calls, etc. So... I'm excited for the pre-patch. I think that that limited time, one to two month, whatever it ends up being, of just unique meta that no one's ever done before, I think that's going to be so fun. I think TBC launch is going to be really fun. Um, and yeah, I'm just I'm excited to to do what I can to support the community with events and stuff behind the scenes. Unfortunately, I, I won't be able to play quite as much uh, anymore. Uh, and as when you talked about it, I'm yeah. working on the OT stuff behind the scenes. I also recently just had a baby, for those that don't know. So my life has been completely in flux. I also moved across the country to Texas. Uh, so I just don't have the time that I used to. But I'm excited to watch you guys play it on the second monitor and to see you guys experience it and to hopefully just live vicariously through you guys. Yeah, I think I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I, I, I really, really do. And, you know, uh, we'll do we'll do events and stuff. We'll plan. We'll probably like as far as org stuff goes, you mentioned, we'll probably do some stuff with the org, too. And uh, like I, I have some plans for like events and stuff it's, it's gonna be a lot of fun um uh, yeah so uh, stay safe what about you what is your what is your primary thing that you want to do in burning crusade do you think that you want to get accomplished you know in vanilla wow i had like a set of goals like my biggest goal was you know i wanted to get server first and i want to get scarab lord and so i did i did a lot of things i wanted to do um in tbc back in the day i got season two glad I re- I think the coolest mount ever in the game is season three gladiator I mount, and so I, I really want to try to get uh, season three gladiator mount. I frankly, there, <laughs> okay, Frank, I, I I'm I'm okay at PvP. I'm not amazing, and there's a lot of really really good people. I bet all the retail guys are going to come and do TBC arena. There's you know the, uh, the there's the TBC private server guys are going to come do arena. There's a lot of really good classic players. It's going to be really really competitive. So I'm looking forward to. Uh, like grinding and getting better like you know mm. that that learning process of improving over time as you queue and you just learn and get better and you and you, and you have all those moments of like oh wow i need to do this that's always super fun with pvp and i'm really looking forward to uh, to the grind on the way up arena is going to be really really hard and really competitive now it's going to be interesting yeah. to see how how it pans out because like like i was good 15 years ago but what does that mean now like not really all that much uh yeah. like uh because for for me i like i, I was like 2200 i played 5v5 a lot right so i mm-hmm. I, I was 2205s on my rep paladin i was top rated alliance paladin in nightfall battle group season three and mm-hmm. um that, that's like a whole story i'm not gonna get into but uh i haven't been playing arenas like hardcore with, with a lot of these retail guys a lot of these guys have been doing a lot of re- uh, retail arenas for like you know over the years they're uh, they're gonna be like really high performing because that's what they do. They're retail arena players. Like, um, well, there, there's those guys, and then there's people that have spent the last ten years playing TBC private servers. That's all they've done. And and TBC I think I, I do think that's a thing too. But here's something to consider: given how classic turned out mechanically, I, I don't know exactly how things are gonna go with uh, the difference between private servers and and classic vanilla. Because there was a lot of stuff like PvP wise that was mechanically different from private to uh, uh, classic WoW. Like yeah, that, true. I, I, mean, I had to relearn had a these, lot of stuff at the beginning of classic. We had these conversations. I remember is like, uh, you know, how, how are the private server guys going to do in classic? I mean, Hey, you look at every single top, uh, speed running guild in classic. It's a, it's a private server guild, right. like the private server guys. Like, and these, and the reason why they do well is not because they played private servers. It's because they're just obsessed, right? It's the knowledge. They played yeah. private servers because they're obsessed and they're going to continue to be obsessed. And that's what makes them good. So, um, yeah, I get the private server guys are going to do really well in arena. I'm sure. I'm yeah. Sure. I think yeah, I think they're gonna do well. I'm just saying that the there is there is going to be some some form of learning curve there if uh, if it's anything like it was with WoW Classic, vanilla. Um, yeah, that's that's how I feel about all that. Um, are you guys talking about PvP? Yeah, PvP in general. Yeah, arena. I think I think the retail guys are gonna are, are really gonna be because uh, that's that's kind of like their their forte, right? Their arenas and yeah. there's all kinds of different PvP skill, right? There's like battlegrounds, there's rated rated battlegrounds, there's arenas, there's dueling. Uh, there's world PvP. There's all kinds of different types of skill in Classic WoW, and and they're all played in different ways. And uh, arena skill is its own thing, right? Counting timers or like 
knowing certain things to do in certain comps. It's a lot more. Uh, there's like the big meme that vanilla PvP is like very rock paper scissors. It's uh, I actually think it's more like that in arenas than it is in vanilla PvP because it's a lot about like you have like the the concept of trading cooldowns and wait okay we got to wait for this burst window we got to do this and we got to trade these cooldowns and knowing how to best handle all those trades okay we got to wall this push here we have a burst window here we got to push at this point i i think it's um maybe, maybe rock paper isn't, isn't really the best analogy but it's a lot more um actually no it is because there's a lot of things that like just some comps just straight up own right like rmp is just gonna it's just gonna dominate especially with how much better players are now Players are better. We have better equipment. We didn't have MMO mouses in Burning Crusade. We didn't have these. So if you have like a, a Naga or a Scimitar or anything of that sort, uh, we are able to hit more buttons physically. It's, it's going to be different. I will I'm tell you this. It's going to pan out. I'm going to be totally honest, okay? When I got Glad Season 2 on my mage, we were playing RMP. I uh -huh. was 12 years old, and I clicked on my abilities. Yeah. Like, Depending on your battle group, <laughs> people were dog shit. People were terrible. You go back, you can go back and watch old, you know, like gladiator footage on YouTube from 2007. Like, they're terrible. Like they're they're absolutely yeah. terrible. It's it's a different game, different ballpark, right? It's it's very yeah. Like uh, especially something like RMP. Like I remember. So so Stacey told me this like three years ago. I, I don't remember if you told me this, but Stacey have said I I got glad in season two. But I never tell anybody about it. I like almost never talk about it because <laughs> I, I I was 12 years old. I played RMP and I still don't know what I was doing because like it was literally like they when you said yeah. they would just tell you go polymorph this guy and then hit the other guy and that's like just all you did and you just happened to get gladiator. People were just bad. Like yeah. people were just really really bad back then. Yeah. It's... Go go watch some old gladiator footage. People were bad. Yeah, it's very very different now. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. It's going to be interesting to see how it all pans out. I love arenas. I'm going to play arenas. I'm going to do TBC. I'm going to love it. Um, raids. Every, everything is going to be great. But uh, mm -hmm. as far as like expectations, who knows? I, I would love to try and go and push for Glad. Uh, I think in a lot of ways, Rep Paladins, people think Rep Paladins are really good in Burning Crusade. They get really big buffs for PvE. But to be honest, they don't really get... In, in some ways, they get worse because of what the game asks of you. Whenever you're playing arenas, the game the game is under a microscope. And it's about very, very specific things. Uh, like, it, it asks for very, very specific things. Interrupts. Uh, gap closers. Mortal strike. CC. These are all things that paladins don't have. Paladins have a lot of burst damage. And a little bit of utility with, like, freedom, bop, off heals, cleanse, that sort of stuff. But they're missing on a lot of things that are really important for arenas. And... Uh, I'll, I'll tell you this. Uh -huh. I, I've been uh, doing a little bit of TBC arena lately. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all I'll say. Yeah. And uh, Rhett Shaman comps are really scary. And, Rhett, and, Rhett Shaman. And that's why I think uh, that's that's a really good testament to, I think, people just being better gamers now. Because back then, Rhett Shaman was strong and a lot of burst. But I remember we didn't have... Like, if you had a Shaman who could interrupt somebody while healing, like interrupt an opposing mm -hmm. caster or whatever, or healer while they're healing, they were like a god. And now that's kind of like the standard. So having somebody like a Resto Shaman in your group as a Rep Paladin in arenas helps fill in those gaps because they still have their Earth Shock, they still have their Interrupt while you don't have an Interrupt, right? And Wind Fury is just insane. So uh, like for me, I'm looking to play uh, like Rhett Warrior Shaman 3s. I think that would be outstanding. Like a Rhett Warrior Shaman 3s group or in 5s doing Rhett Warrior Shaman, uh, Holy Paladin, and then probably Mage, Rogue, or Hunter as the fifth. That's what we did back in the day. We had a Mage, Rogue, we, we rotated those guys. Um, rogue, rogue and mage were probably the best, but, uh, but yeah, so that's, that's what we did. And, and putting a ret, a warrior and a shaman together is, is very, very strong. Um, as far as like the damage output goes, but you can get kited a little bit and yeah, so it'll be fun. I, I'm very excited for Burning Crusade arenas. I, I cannot wait. That's my favorite period of time in the game was arenas. And I, if I can, I'd, I'd play them all day, right? Again, my stream has changed. So, like, I, I, I probably won't be able to play Classic all day every day after maybe the first few months. But um, the uh, it, it just, it just, we'll see how, how it goes, right? And uh, mm -hmm. I'm very, very excited. I think we all are. Um, do you guys have anything else you want to talk about? We went a little bit over time today. We, we were planning on finishing, uh, like, probably about 20, 20 minutes ago or so. Yeah, hey, you know, I, I could talk all day. I do every day. I talk about all this stuff, but mm -hmm. I understand you guys. Tip, tips is a meeting, so yeah, Tips has a meeting. Stay safe. Needs to go stream himself. Um, why is Tips bald now? Because he's been playing a lot of WoW. 
So that's yeah. just kind of what happens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bald and fat and old man that's, that's how it goes dude it, like you hit 30 and it's just like a like you just wake up and it's just like wait where, where did everything go so it's just like overnight uh let's take a couple questions out of chat usually we end with a little bit of q a um let's take a couple questions out of chat we won't go too long um do you guys have anything specific what, what do you guys think are you are you guys are excited for for classic ass season two the plan is again that this is going to be a series uh, leading up to Burning Crusade, we're going to see how it goes. Um, uh, I think the next episode that we're going to do, we, we don't know exactly if we're going to do it weekly or bi-weekly, but uh, the next episode will be not next week, but two weeks from now. And uh, Well, we, we should say this. Uh, tips, is, at least from what I understand, is not going to come on again. So uh, right. this is like Tips' uh, Tips last last class guest. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's that's what I was going to say. So Tips is... Uh, tips with, with everything you got going on with, with the org, and, and he's, he's got a kid now, and uh tips has a lot of other responsibilities so uh tips is going to be going to go focus on that stuff uh it was an awesome time with the start of classic cast and we wanted to make sure tips was here to talk about it a little bit and um you know just kind of everything that we've kind of put together and, and this community right with like uh the people who who support us with classic and the people who have been like pushing for classic for literally years before it actually released so um yeah, Tibbs, I mean, if you, I guess if you want to say anything, uh, it, it's been, it, like, it's been awesome, like, starting this whole thing, right, with, with both of you guys, but uh, it's been, uh, it's been really, really cool, so. It's been yeah. my pleasure, honestly, to talk with, with you guys, S-Fan and Stay Safe, um, for the past few years, all the memories, the early days, you know, on Classic Cast, also prepping for Classic Cast, just talking in Discord, you know, worrying about, you know, our streams and what was <laughs> happen and our futures and were we ever going to make it and stuff like that it's been a crazy crazy journey and uh very blessed to have been a part of this podcast and uh you know again very excited for the future i look forward to watching you guys again on the second monitor every couple of weeks when you do this and uh looking forward mm -hmm. to uh i'm not sure i'm not going to say anything but i, I espen you and i've talked a little bit about potentially who's going to be coming on uh looking forward to seeing who you guys bring on mm -hmm. in the future and um, yeah, I, I I hope everyone that's watched Classic Cast, uh, whatever, however many episodes you watched, I hope they were fruitful. I hope you enjoyed them, and I hope at the end of the day, everyone really enjoyed Vanilla Classic and they got what they wanted out of it. And here's to TBC and the future. Yeah, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be it's gonna be a really really good time. Um, it's gonna be a really really good time. So yeah, absolutely, we could not have had a third a uh, third host for class guest, and I'm happy. I'm happy you were able to come on and do uh do do one final one. Yeah, for I, sure. Head off. I think I think yeah I think it's it's been a really good uh I, I think I think it's been a great episode today, and I think I think it's like kind of like a good wrap up of <laughs> uh kind of like season one at the same time. Um, do yeah, that's fine. Do, uh, he's already gone. He's Feels already like gone. Yeah, it's over. Here. GG. It's oh, over man. chat. <laughs> uh, so, do you guys have any questions? Maybe, maybe a couple. Some people said, uh, uh, "This is good." This is something we actually want to talk about. I think we missed uh, predictions for um, predictions for for launch and pre patch. When do you when do you think it's uh, pre patch is going to hit, and when do you think launch is going to hit? Mm -hmm. It's hard to put dates down. I think beta will probably be a month and a half. I think pre patch will be a month. I don't think they'll overlap at all. So I think you'll have like, yeah. let's say that we could have beta starting next week. That's the rumor that's going around. You have that for a month and a half. You have like a week off and then you have pre-patch for a month and then you have TBC. So TBC could be three three months from now. Could be, who knows? Yeah. Uh, so early, super early summer, June. I think that we're probably going to get beta sometime next month. I think, I think beta for sure is, I, I'd be really surprised if beta didn't happen in April. Um, after that point, I think maybe we're going to get a June, July pre-patch and then probably a release in August. My initial thought was that we would get it at the beginning of the summer. And then there was that leak that happened. And then I was like, full steam ahead. Beginning of summer is going to be great. But what kind of stopped my, uh, thought process on that was the fact that they didn't give us a date at BlizzCon. They just told us 2021. So... Which makes you think it's further out than people had thought, right? Right. And the original cycle of Vanilla WoW was about 25 months. And that yeah. would put it in September. I don't think that it should be 25 months. I don't think that it should be... Uh, it definitely shouldn't be longer than that. But I think uh, P 
people are just completing the content so much faster now. I don't think it needs to be 25 months. I think like 21, 22 months is kind of like the sweet spot. And if it came out in August, then maybe you should mute uh, mute tips real quick. Yeah, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, oh, there he is. Hello, baby. The baby. Yeah, there's, there's <laughs> tips, baby. There's uh, there's tips outs, baby. So, <laughs> good one, mate. So, uh, so yeah, that's uh, oh, I'll go ahead and mute him so baby doesn't cry too much. So people wave. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, that's what I think. I, I, I'm hoping yeah. for a two months. I'm hoping for a two months. You're sorry, I muted you for a second. doesn't I'm think. Sure there I, he is. I, I unmuted you, Tips. All right, cool, cool. Yeah. But, I was uh, say, you know, part of me doesn't think the beta is going to come out a week from now because, you know, like pr prior to the classic beta, a lot of people knew, like we all kind of knew, is we all knew like a couple weeks in advance when it was going to be in uh, a lot of like media outlets knew about it and stuff. And yeah. I don't know, maybe I'm just in the dark personally. I haven't heard anything. I have no idea. Maybe yeah. you guys know. I don't know. No, I, I haven't. I haven't heard anything because here's the thing. They would. Um, yeah. I don't think it's going to be a week from now because classic beta, like you said, they told us one week prior to it coming out. Uh, they told yeah. a number of people and then it was NDA and we couldn't say anything. Right. So right. Then we just didn't talk right. about it. <laughs> Cause we're like, let's just not talk about it. Um, but we haven't heard anything yet. And it's, uh, it's a week out from, from what that one leak was. I also yeah. hope it's not a week out because ashes of creation alpha is happening on March 19th through 26th. Oh, so that would be kind of bad. I, I think I'm excited for Ashes of Creation Alpha and I want to play it and give it like an honest review and look at it and, uh, you know, just kind of, hey, this is what I think about this game. I'm, I'm looking forward to right. it. Maybe it's going to be good. Maybe it's not going to be good, whatever. Right. But at least I, I think it, it'd be fun for us to look at. Um, I am. Well, I heard, I heard Ashes full launch is in August, right? No, no, no. I, so, I think that's a or or is that is, is that, that new world? That's new world. New world is in August. Okay. Free alpha one test is March nineteenth. Then okay. the actual alpha one non NDA is April sixth. Then I think they have alpha two either later in the year or early next year. I think. So the question is, do you think Blizzard is going to time classic TBC launch to kind of undercut one of these other MMOs coming out? They've done that in the past. Yeah. With other games. I mean, if if TBC beta comes out. And we're in Ashes Alpha. Like, if, if TBC Beta is out on 316 and Ashes Alpha is on 319, I'm probably playing TBC Beta. Like, yeah, just being honest. Because, yeah. like, I know I'm going to like TBC Beta. I don't know if I'm going to like Ashes Alpha. But I, but mm -hmm. I want to play it to learn about it. But, it. but realistically, like, I'm going to like TBC Beta. And um, if they were to do something like that, I hope it doesn't happen. Um for this first alpha, I hope that TVC beta come, cause I think they're doing another alpha next month ashes. Uh, mm -hmm. if they did it, if they had TVC beta come out and then ashes alpha comes out around the same time, then I'm a hundred percent not even gonna worry about it. And I'll be doing TVC beta. But for this first one, I really want to take a good first look at ashes. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I do again, uh, for the record, I actually think August is way too, too far out. I, I, I think yeah. it's, I think it's a bad decision cause max came out at the beginning of December. And originally, Nax was six months. That's why. That's why a, a like a May, June like May pre patch June ish release makes sense. But yeah. uh, I just don't think that that's gonna happen because they didn't say it. Like, why would they not say a date? You know, three four months out from the launch. Maybe they just didn't want to commit. But uh, that's a lot of next premise. Unless they're planning on like a two or three month long pre patch to kind of spice yeah. it up. But I would then, I would love like, a two month pre patch. I, I think I think a two month pre patch right. starting at like the five month point and then two months to seven months. Like, what would that be? Five month point would be, um, you'd be looking at, well, you'd be looking at the beginning of May. And mm -hmm. then you have a May, and then you have a May, June pre patch. And then July you launch the game real quick. Let me ask you this real fast question. You know, with the classic alpha, it was first capped at 30 and then they bumped up to 40 after like a month or so. What are they going to let us do in TBC beta? Do you think? 65 or, or what all the way to 70 i think they made a mistake in wow classic by not letting us do the raids to to be able to test the content in in one respect because this stuff ended up being way too easy and mm -hmm. um i think nax had pretty good testing and it does kind of kill the hype a little bit of nax coming out on 
for streamers and stuff like that. It kind of kills the on-stream hype of doing the raids. Yeah. But in my opinion, I would rather the raids just be good and and because even as a streamer, actually, even as a streamer, like let's take streaming out of it completely, right? Which I which I'm already thinking about it not in that way. But even as a streamer, it's better if the raids are good and enjoyable and the proper difficulty, not too hard, but the proper difficulty. And that way it'll last a long time other than like a flash in the pan. Like, oh, you know, I got the hype of like the new raid release, but everything's broken and it's not good. Uh, you might as well, like, it's fine if it hurts the hype a little bit of like seeing the raid for the first time on stream, as long as we know it works and it's tuned properly. That's my opinion. Yeah, or, I, or they could I, put I an NDA they... on it, but I think it's going to be hard for them to keep up with. They could put an NDA uh, on the raids. I don't know. Yeah, it's they hard. They have a certain raid team. I don't know. Yeah. There's an NDA for a lot of other MMOs, and, and they keep up with it, and they make sure people don't leak. Um, but I, I, in my opinion, I think if, if they really don't want to have people leak raids, then I think they should ha still have testing for it and just put an NDA on it. Like, I would gladly do that. I would gladly do NDA testing for raids and just mm -hmm. be like, you know, maybe I could t maybe if they say, you can tell people you're doing it, you just can't talk about anything and, or stream it. Or maybe you yeah. can even talk about yeah. it and just don't stream it. I don't know. Whatever, whatever Blizzard would want. I just, I just want them to have people to come in and to test raids and to be able to give like an on it. Okay, this feels right or this doesn't feel right. Because at the end of the day, and this is something that I'm hoping Blizzard really learns from Classic WoW, and I've said this for three years, almost four. The feeling of authenticity is way more important than factual authenticity. The numbers and the armor values and the resist, like this stuff doesn't matter. If people don't feel like they're playing the game, then they're not going to feel like it's the game. Like, it, let's say people even misremember something. It's more important they feel like they're playing Classic WoW than them actually playing the specifics of Classic WoW. So that's uh, um, that's how I feel about it, right? Yeah. Um, to answer Stay Safe's question on the scope, I think because Burning Crusade is so much smaller in scope than vanilla, I don't see a reason why they would limit the levels. I think bare minimum level 70. You'd assume they'd open up the dungeons as well. I think the only thing that they might get off, you know, for whatever reason is Gruul, Mags, and Kara, but um, I, I think they should they should open them. I think they should test them. Uh, yeah. Or maybe, you know, unless they have a really, if they staffed up internally and they can, they're can they testing Kara over and over again, maybe keep that as just kind of a little gem for launch. But, um, but in terms of, like, capabilities, I think, you know, Burning Crusade is just so much smaller in scope that might as well test the whole thing. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, could be. I, I think could be. I think it's a good idea. I really do. Um, but we are over time. By I actually, actually a lot. Like uh, I know tips. You gotta go. States. I've gotta go. Uh, I, I have my stuff that I'm gonna do today for stream. Um, I'll be doing GTRP and and uh, then I have my classic raid tonight at eight o'clock central. Uh, States is gonna be streaming some classic WoW stuff. Um, thank you guys. Thank you guys for joining us. We're really excited about bringing back Classic Cast and, and being able to talk about a lot more stuff. Uh, kind of like a season two, episode one, introductory to kind of the uh, new little series of Classic Cast, wrapping up Classic a little bit. And I'm sure we're going to naturally continue to talk a little bit about Classic Vanilla uh, a little bit throughout the course of the, uh, the series, but we are going to focus on Classic Burning Crusade leading up to Burning Crusade. So uh, thank you guys for joining us. I'm going to stay live. I'm going to keep streaming. Uh, take a little bit of a break and maybe I'll play the intro videos and stuff. And then, um, we'll, we'll see you guys next time in two weeks. Next, next episode we will do in two weeks and, uh, we'll see if we want to do it bi-weekly or, uh, or weekly. Uh, but we're not, we're not exactly sure yet. So thank you guys so much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for watching guys. It's good to be back. Thank mm -hmm. you guys. Take care. Good luck. Yes, man. Stay safe. Take it's going to be awesome. Thank you tips. Thank you guys. Yep. See you guys.